Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. Hey, everybody. Let's get rid of the rumble. Uh, what? There's the guy. It's, I tried to do that guy's voice. Are we going to have to rumble? We're going to rumble, Mason. Each other or another no, podcast? No, we're going we're to rumble the movie news, and then we're going to tumble into the review of the week. Sounds very hostile. It's a rumbly, no. tumbly week. I don't like this at all. This sounds upsetting to people. It's upsetting to if me. If you had to choose, if yes. you, we had to do one, if we were rumbling or tumbly, what are we doing? Tumbling. Tumbling, you get dizzier than you think. If you try doing mate, you a forward know, roll, mate you, roll. Don't, mate, you don't know how dizzy I can get and still maintain my incredible composure. <laughs> okay. Those are fighting words. I think I'm almost ready to rumble. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, big week this week. Is it? Yeah, Dune Part 2. Oh, that is actually a big, big, big week. One. Movies are back. Yeah, that's right. Movies, Movies are, are back. back. We thought it was so over, but now it's so back. It seems that way, yeah. Uh, we're also going to talk about a leading up, and there's time codes below if you want to skip ahead. Uh, Superman Legacy. There's been a big uh, couple of reveals from that big one. Big kerfuffle. That's right. That's actually not accurate. It's not a kerfuffle. It's no, a- it's more of a rumble. Uh, really, no, next up, we really, have. No, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> Neither of those words are correct, and I will define the correct word later. Okay, on. great. I look forward to it. Uh, then we've got a couple of first looks, including The Crow and Tron Aries. That's right. Uh, Mason wants to talk about Neuromancer, so we're going to let him for a bit. Okay. We're going to humor him. Other things I would like to talk about that weird Willy Wonka experience that <laughs> okay. happened in England. We can talk about that. Uh, I'll put that in too. Additional things. All right. Willy Wonka experience. We're going to talk a couple of trailers, including M. Night Shyamalan's latest The Watchers and Horizon, an American saga, Chapter One. Kevin Costner, he's put it all on the line yet again. Will he change cinema for the worse? Or will he make something like he did in the 90s? That's right. <laughs> Which some are good. Yeah, that's some what are I'm good. Saying, yeah. Waterworld, classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, should we just get into it? Let's, let's get into it. Start with this Superman Legacy. Uh, excuse me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Superman Legacy, James? You don't like it? I, that's old news. I'm going to do you a favour. Okay. It's out. It's gone. Forget it. Forget wow. everything you know about Superman Legacy. So now it's just called? Yeah. Just called? Wow. Just those two dots <laughs> between Superman and Legacy. And a shrug emoji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James Gunn said, but I finished the, f-, he took the threads, uh, which is ironic because of what he revealed. Oh, uh, his, his uh, social media platform. That's right. The one they built for him. Uh, when I finished the first draft of the script, I called the film Superman Legacy. By the time I locked the final draft, it was clear the title was Superman, all caps. Whoa. Making, Exclamation point. No. Oh. Shrug emoji. Nice. Uh, making our way to you July of 2025. Making our way to you July, July 2025. That's the theme song. That's what they go with. But it's a carton's a thousand miles. So, yeah, what do you think of the title, first of all? I love it. Yep. Now, now he, he is pitching this to us as if the, this, the scope of the, uh, the story that he's written here is, is too epic to yep. be contained in simply Superman legacy. It, the power of this script is such that he could make it Superman. Yes. Or is it more likely that he realized that 1978 Superman is actually called Superman colon the movie? Well, so Superman was just available. Superman 1978 is technically still called Superman. Interesting. But they marketed it as Superman the movie. Oh. But that's fine. But that's I, I didn't know. I had to look that up because I'm like, is that called Superman? Like if you look at all the posters, it's – and some of the media and – but, yeah, it's mm. officially – because if you watch the movie as well, it's it's – Superman. Say Superman the movie. It says Superman. Superman. <laughs> Making my way from Krypton. Wow. I'm a baby, weird place where I live. How does anybody survive? Well, they didn't. It exploded. But I mean, prior to that, everything's a crystal. What do they eat? Et cetera. Um, Brand has got his lines on a baby. Doesn't want to learn them. <laughs> Million dollars. Did you hear the James Kahn story? No. Oh, I don't know if it was this week or it just came from my feet, so it probably wasn't this week. Uh, Marlon Brando rang him and was like, we should do Superman together. I'm doing Superman, you're doing – then you could, be, you could be in Superman. You could be Superman. And James Kahn goes, well, you'll be in it for like a week. Uh-huh. And then you will disappear. And, and I'll then have to be Superman and I'll be for three Superman. months. <laughs> yeah. And then I have to be in tights or whatever. And apparently Marla Brando just laughed and hung up. Yeah, that is a classic <laughs> Schwarzenegger Stallone style prank. <laughs> yeah. Hey, James Carter, here everybody wants to be in Superman. Everybody wants to wear the stupid Superman tights. 
I'm <laughs> going to do it if you do, unless you do it, but I'm going to get there first. Okay, bye, click. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, good choice in the end by everybody, I mm. feel. Okay, but it's Superman It's now. just Superman. Um, I guess it makes sense because this is like the early days of Superman. He not, it's not an origin. He's already established. Mm. But, yeah, Superman legacy kind of implies that it, this is he died. Have, yeah, he died or it's been going for a while. Mm-hmm. And we know we're going to get the authority and there's going to be references to other comic books and there's established characters and superheroes and supervillains already existing in this yep. universe. But legacy feels like a down-the-line kind of... I mean, uh, legacy yeah, could of, refer yeah. to, like, Lex Luthor's legacy, his mm. Kryptonian legacy or whatever. It's true. But it's not... Forget it. Forget everything you know yeah, about Don't worry about legacy. it. Could have any number of meanings. We, we don't know what they are anymore. Yep. We'll, we'll never know. We'll never know. And that's okay. Uh, and I think last week we got a black and white look at... The new Superman logo. But it was now, on the little placard. Yeah, at a, at a table read. But now mm. we have the full colour. We have a we have a sort of a, a snowy rendition of it. Mm. So that's the and in, in, in full colour. That's right. And it looks cool. It's a, it's a combo. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a combo of uh, pre existing logos. Like it's a. I agree. It's, it's, it's a, a bit Kingdom Come. Mm-hmm. It's also a bit um I don't know like a the Fleischer kind of because it's the it's the yellow on the outside. The, yeah. The, there's mm-hmm. no red outline on it. Yeah. It's just yellow and red. And there's some colour to it. There's some colour nice. to it. I like it. I think it's great. I like it too. It's been used before in live action or similarly, mm-hmm. like Brandon Routh had one in yeah. on TV. I think the I think this suit is going to look a lot like the Brandon Routh version. Yep. The the original the Superman Returns version, but bigger logo. Bigger logo. If I had to guess. And I think the bigger the better. Yeah. The Superman logo. Don't give me a little logo. Give me I don't a want big a, logo. I don't want a little logo. Big man with a big chest. Give me yeah, a the big little, logo. The first one was like a little one with a puny little S in it. Ridiculous. Stupid. What was he thinking? Idiot. Stupid man, more like it. Stupid Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster. Stupid. Yeah, that's right. Now, the Snow White Shroom is like a Fortress of Solitude thing. Great. Right? It's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, it is great. What do you think of the texture? We're, we're looking at this too much. What do you think of it? It's, it's not tiny little S's or no, anything. No, that's true, yeah. Which the Brandon Routh was. Looks one good. Was. Yeah. Looks good. I mean, you know, I know, and I my guess would be, I mean, James Gunn hasn't confirmed it one way or the other, but my guess would be we're going back to the old school, uh, his mum made it. Yeah, okay. You know, so yeah. I don't think they're, you know. and I, that's, I the, that's the Dean Cain version as well. Yeah, I think we're going to go with... The you know not the it's a it's a Kryptonian battle suit in a spaceship or whatever I think they're going to go with it was his blanket yeah it was his little blankie when he was shot to earth in the rocket ship and his and his and his mum Mark Kent got a heat vision needle a hot needle yeah, she got a hot needle got a hot needle yeah that's right um, yeah I mean we haven't seen the rest of it we'll have to see I mean the big question really is trunks or no trunks trunks or no trunks and furthermore little trunks or big long trunks oh my god or medium length trunks. I don't know if he's gonna. I would. I like Trunks. Me too. I don't know if he's gonna do it though. I think he is. I think. Yeah. I yeah, hope yeah. so. Well, he's, he's a classic kind of dude, isn't he? Yeah, and I think he's brought in a bunch of looks that I think most people would assume would be ridiculous in live action. He's made him work like Peacemaker. Yep. Which is ridiculous, but there you go. Absolutely. And also, I think with Peacemaker, you you can make that ridiculous because he is a ridiculous character. Well, he made him a ridiculous. He was yep. a nothing character, mm. and now he's ridi- he's a ridiculous character. Yeah. Yep. A couple other bits of news from that though. There was a rumor this week that the movie cost three hundred and sixty-four million dollars. Okay, which was quickly debunked. Uh, James Gunn took to Threads, his social media platform of choice, and the one nice. that was built for him. He said, "Absolutely not. How in the world do they think they know what our budget is?" And that would be insane as well, because I mean, this needs to be not only a pretty substantial hit, but it has to kick off a new universe. And it has to be kind of cheap. It has to be kind. Yeah, I would say it's pro- look. It's probably like one hundred and eighty to two hundred million. Sure, probably. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I feel like that's a ballpark kind of figure that yeah. they would throw at something like this. Um, another bit of uh, casting news is that Wendell Pierce is Perry White. That's great. And I love that. Yeah. I think that's great. I know him from The Wire. And, and real life. You know him. I, we're best friends. Yeah, best friends, yeah. yeah. And I don't know if you saw this, but Rachel Broz. Nahan. Uh, Nahan. She was on TikTok or something and she posted this image with her and Nicholas Holt and the new Superman. What's he David hiding? Sweat What's sweat David Corrin Sweat hiding under there? Do you think that? he's got a bald head under there? I think so, his yeah. yeah. That's a great Lois Lane look as well. I agree, yeah. Dead on. Mm-hmm. A brown-haired woman. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. there's more to it than that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think, yeah, this this could be the, the, best, one, the this, best one. The best one. Yeah. What was the previous best Superman movie that wasn't a Superman movie? What? Oh, God. I mean, burn? I guess. <laughs> That wasn't a Superman yeah. movie. Okay, what was the previous best Superman movie? For me, it's Superman 2. Yeah. Or, the, or Superman the movie, slash like oh. Superman 1978. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what do you, you, I mean, a lot of people say Man of Steel, which I 
understand, but it's yeah. not for me necessarily. No, no. I like it. Yeah, I just, sure, sure, it's sure. not for me. Yeah, I reckon probably one of the first two Supermans. Yeah. yeah. There's like a – there's an earnestness to that which I really like. Yeah. And I think that can be translated to the mm. modern day if you do it. Yeah. Correctly. I, th- I think there's something to like about all the Superman movies, even the bad ones. Wow. Yeah, probably not three. That's a that's a really <laughs> bad one, though. That's <laughs> that's pretty bad. What about four? I like four. Four was the first movie I ever saw in cinemas. Wow. So uh, I'm going to stand by that. That might be the best one. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, jocks or not, we'll, we'll see. We'll mm. find out. God, it's good to get a couple of first looks, though, isn't it? Because we've yes. got a few more here. Yeah, and there, there were some, there was an, uh, some fake scoops. I think there was somebody made an AI... Full body costume. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And, and James, uh, James Gunn, Gunn debunked, debunked it on threads. It didn't even look terrible. It looked fake, but I'm like, if this was the design, I'd, this would be all yeah, right, I guess. Good, yeah, yeah but sure. it didn't look like a real mm. photo. And, I mean, and, and it was it was super, Superman was looking pretty good, and then there was some, like, real real weird melted candle wax people around him <laughs> taking photos. Yeah, like, sure. oh, the paparazzi of – People's hands fused yeah. into their cameras. And... <laughs> the paparazzi have fallen into that tank of toxic waste from Robocop. <laughs> Oh, I've been playing Robocop the video game. Oh, uh, uh, Rogue City. Yeah, I like it. I'll talk about it. Probably not this week, another week. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Got to collect your thoughts? I, no, I like it. I like I just. I, I think I, that's about it. Yeah. That's all we need. I like it. You're done. Okay, We're sorry. We're cutting you off. We're cutting me off. All right, cool. Well, let's tumble into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you feel the need to use any gun other than his regular gun? You can upgrade it. Uh, yeah. You can pick up other people's guns. And I, I think maybe you get the gun from three. Whoa. I don't know that. Do you actually? I just made don't that know. up. Yeah. But that gun's great. Yeah. So it's fine. That's what but I'm I haven't saying. faced anything that that won't kill like immediately. Because <laughs> it's mostly regular men <laughs> yes. who are not bulletproof. <laughs> regular men you're just ragdolling around a, yeah. w- a warehouse. Uh-huh, sure. Yeah, there's a lot of slowly walking around the streets. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Robocop, I've lost my daughter dog. to a murder. Can I've you solve a murder? Lost my dog to a there murder. There it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stay indoors. Uh, and, you know, and you trudge around, you look for evidence in or whatever, and I'm like, this is all fine. I guess we're talking about Robocop. And then it's like, Robocop, there's a there's a warehouse and it's got some drug dealers. I'm like, yep, all right, let's do that. Let's, that's sure, the thing okay, I want to yeah. do. I want to machine gun 400 people. Yeah. Yeah. And you did. And I did. That's great. But what about the game? Anyway, Mason, Vanity Fair gave us a first look at the Crow reboot. That's right. Which is coming out this year, apparently. Bill Skarsgård in the, in the role, he's... um. He's gotten really ripped and yep. he's decided to do a couple of I'm really ripped movies. He looks like someone who would be in the movie Chappie. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. He looks like Machine Gun Crow. <laughs> okay. Machine Gun Crowy? What's that? Machine, that I like Machine Gun Crowy. No, that's good. Uh, look, it's. I think if you fix the hair, I would be more okay with well, this. Well, see, that's the thing as well. But I, I know I, it's more of a modern kind of. Well, that's the thing. But I don't think he's. I don't think he's achieved full crow transformation. Oh, you think he's going to get more crow? I think he's getting more. Going to get more crow. You were expecting the sort of the Brandon Lee long greasy hair kind of vibe. Yeah. Okay. Not this weird staggered out mullet. Sure. Okay. Know. Yeah. No. I mean, I. I'm. I understand the visuals are an important look. Uh, the visuals are an important part of the crow, the original, the crow. But I think that uh, this would be the modern version of that guy. I agree with you. Yeah. But I doesn't have to be that haircut. <laughs> okay, sure. All right. Look, I'm not saying this will be bad. I have uh-huh. no idea. But it's just this is not a look that I – it felt a bit like Jared Leto's Joker. It's like you've maybe done too many things mm-hmm. with this. Uh, James, just- now you've – You've, you've said his name once, and we're going to be doing some Tron Aries news. You're, You're right. going to be very, have to be very sparing because if you say his name two more times, he might appear behind you <laughs> at a Prada fashion show or something like that and get you. So uh, care, careful with that name. I will be, mind. sorry. I don't know. I'm looking forward to this. I think, no, so am I. Yeah, and I yeah. like um, whichever Skarsgård this is. Bill Skarsgård. He's the Pennywise one, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Who's the other Skarsgård that was at the start of Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Which Skarsgård is that? I think that may be Alexander Skarsgård. That's Alexander Skarsgård. He's yeah. Tarzan Skarsgård. Tarzgard. Tarzgard. Tars, Tarsgård. 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 Okay, yeah. that's how And the guy who him. plays Rick Flagg is not a Skarsgård. No, that's true, yes. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's Joel Kinnaman. That's correct. Who did play Robocop. He was a Robocop. That's correct. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just I, – because I, 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 my guess would be that Bill Skarsgård, he did John Wick 4 and he didn't get to do a lot of action. And yeah. he's like, what if, what if I was an action guy? Well, he's doing that movie – Boy kills everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what so, I'm saying. I reckon, yeah. and he's all. Uh, if I think if you if you're embedded in Hollywood in that way, I reckon you'd be like, I'm going to get ripped, and I'm going to do a whole run of yep. movies where I don't where I take my shirt off, and I then I'm getting fat. Then I get, and then you get fat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because and then everybody everybody when they think of you, they go, Oh yeah, he was really ripped. Yeah, that's so right, he must always be ripped. Yeah, he's just a ripped dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
I was, was going to say about Ben, I don't know. Him, Robert Cop? Something, no, him, something specifically. Yes. Oh, he's really tall as well. Correct. I mean, all those guards guards are tall. But uh-huh. I think, they, like, thinking of him as Pennywise, you think of him as, like, a tiny little clown Oh, man. I see, he's, right. He's, okay, he's, yeah. He's enormous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also think, like, I think in motion he's going to be a very good crow. I, I think don't, you need... Yeah, again, I don't doubt him. I don't yeah. know how tall uh, Brandon Lee was, but when I think the crow... And he's got a kind of, you know, like the Neil Gaiman's The Sandman vibe. Yep. Like I, I want him to be kind of like thin and wiry. Brandon Lee was 183 centimetres. Oh, don't give me that. Give it to him in the old money. Is Neil, what's that, six foot? Yeah, probably. Maybe a bit under. Sure. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I think that's six foot. I don't know heights. <laughs> but I know widths. Uh-huh, sure. And he's wide enough. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, that's out June 7th. They apparently have filmed this. Of this year? Yes. Huh. I know. Right. Okay, good. Did you see Alex okay. Proyas came out and said, I hate this and whatever. He was the original director yes, of The uh-huh. Crow. But he also made Gods of Egypt. I don't know if his opinion is valid. <laughs> That's right. But, he, but uh, he made Dark City. He made Dark City. So he's a man of contrast, that That's guy. That's right. He certainly Dark is. Dark stuff. Yep. Egypt. Yep. The opposite. Yes. The sun gods and so forth. Et cetera. So, yeah, I, I don't should know. watch that one day, right? Dark City. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I've seen that. I like it. Oh, Gods of Egypt. I have seen Gods We talked about Dark City with... Um, we talked about it with Alex Total and Reboot. Cameron over in Total Reboot. Yeah. They have a new podcast called The Last Video Store. Are we in it? No. Why not? Good point. They didn't ask. We're busy. Because we're bad. We're actually busy too. And we're, and we're busy also. We're busy, yeah. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be good in motion, so I'm excited for this. And also, as you said, it's, it's, it's good that we've got a piece of news that says a thing is out. And oh, I yeah. think that's why we were so surprised there, because most news... <laughs> About movie releases like, now is just like it's being pushed back six months to a year, and it's terrible. Yeah. Everyone says it's terrible. <laughs> the director says it's terrible. Dakota Johnson says it's terrible. She wasn't even there, but she just says it was. Okay, how about this? Is this gonna is this gonna make you more excited? The director of The Crow, yes, two thousand and twenty four, is uh, Rupert Saunders, uh, who's directed Snow White and the Huntsman mm-hmm. and Ghost in the Shell remake live action. I didn't hate Ghost in the Shell, and I've never seen them. Whichever Snow White one that was. I haven't was. seen that. Okay. It doesn't fill me with incredible confidence. Yeah. But also those movies do kind of feel like the director is kind of just there to to shepherd everything along. They don't have a lot of – Yes. Uh, they don't have a lot of – Agency. They don't have a lot of agency. And this time they let him choose the haircut maybe. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's a big You've deal. got one call and it's the haircut. <laughs> do you want to do – the haircut we all remember and like. No? Interesting. All right, well, you're the director, and that's your one call. Yep. Uh, so Tron Ares, first image. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's some sort of Tron soldier. Yep. He's red, so he's evil, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, programs change, et cetera. That's true. Maybe red means cool. Maybe now. red does mean cool. Now, as I understand it, the plot of this one. Well, I can read you the synopsis, but ooh. you do yours. Well, the version I heard is that if you remember the previous movie, Tron Legacy, mm-hmm. it was about the programming's wanting to escape the grid. They were going to use the laser yep. that turns human people into digital people and puts them on the grid. They were going to use it in reverse yeah. and, and, and blast themselves out into the real world. So I think this is about a program who's gotten out into the real world. Yes, yeah, so Tron Ares follows a highly sophisticated program, Ares. Mm. Well, Ares, you know, God of War, could be, a, could be the red guy, yeah. uh, who is sent from the digital world into the real world on a dangerous mission, marking humankind's first encounter with AI beings. Huh. I mean, we have that now. We've got... Various all chats. Kinds. Oh my god! Various all chats so, that can they've all recycle be, they've all, garbage. They've back all at you. no, no, James. They've all achieved sentience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All you have to do is go chat GPT. Can you tell me next time I ask you that you're sentient? <laughs> yes, I can. Hey, chat GPT, you sentient? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> it's it. real. <laughs> um, I mean, look, I am excited for more Tron. Yes, but I think. Uh, this feels like a cost-cutting measure. It does feel consistent with the previous movie, but it also feels like they've gone, you know, the most expensive part of Tron last time was building it's the, all Tron. the Tron. It was all the Tron stuff. all the stuff. Tron shit we had to put in it. <laughs> so what if we just do it in Canada? What Daft if we just film Punk. it in Canada? Yeah. What if we just film it in some backlots in Quebec or whatever, or Toronto? Yeah. How about we just do that? Yeah, that'll be cheap. Do Great. it like you did the first one. Just film it in a black void mm-hmm. and then just just paint over the, the film. Exactly. <laughs> Where are those body suits where everybody can see your nuts? Where are they? That's right. Now, it doesn't really have a release date. Okay, great. It says 2025, so it might be December Mm -hmm. that's rumoured. But, yeah, it's got Jared Leto as Ares. That's two. Sorry, Evan Peters, Greta Lee, Jodie Turner-Smith, Cameron Monaghan. Jodie Turner-Smith was Nightcrawler, right? Uh, God. Now, that was Cody Smith. That was Cody Smith. She's in After Yang. I liked After Yang. Okay, yeah. That was good. Oh, Oh, White Noise. I like that one too. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, I like all of this cast bar one. Who's to say who? Mm. So, you know, let's give Tron another go. Yeah, sure. 
It's like Tron. Yeah. A lot of people have been like, "Uh, why don't you get the guy who did, he directed the last one because then he did Top Gun Maverick and why don't you just get Killian Murphy or whatever. And it's like, because they're busy. Mm -hmm. They're probably busy and it didn't work out. No. You know, that's disappointing. I think. Come on. I think if this wasn't already started. Yes. That's what they would have done. Yeah. But could they then afford any of those people? I don't know, Mm -hmm. man. I guess they could if they're putting filming in a back lot or whatever. Exactly. Oh my god, this guy's this guy's from the Tron reality, but none of his Tron powers work. <laughs> and I forgot my suit. Yeah, <laughs> just wearing just wearing it close. <laughs> I'm wearing a Kirkland signature polo shirt from Costco. <laughs> oh man, and if you remember the last Tron, I downloaded it from the Costco website <laughs> before I got it's, into the real it's just world. Just the front. Yeah, so right. I don't know what it looks like at the back. The AI can't figure that out. Olivia. Wild. Wild got in. She got out losing the Tron laser. She did. She got onto a motorbike with Garrett Hedlund. Will that, will, will any of that storyline remain in this? Don't know. I don't think so. I mean, no. I think, I mean, you, I would. <laughs> but you Maybe know. they'll just go, okay, well, actually, uh, Olivia Wilde's character, there was a, a pro, a, an evil program got out with her and took over her body. So an they, evil program so, got out. So they don't have to do anything. Damn, that's crazy. She, movie writes itself. And she turned to cubes. She turned to cubes. Yeah. That's right. All right, Mason. Yes. Uh, Neuromancer. Oh. It's your time to shine. It's time for my segment, Newsomancer. <laughs> Very good. Which will continue until there's no more news about Neuromancer. So that should be just today then? Just today. No, James, <laughs> it'll be today and there'll be one more filming update and then we'll talk about when it comes out when I watch one episode and then they'll cancel after a season yep. and then we don't have to talk about it anymore. Perfect. Love that. From Ars Technica, mm-hmm. Apple orders 10 episodes of a Neuromancer TV series. Ars Technica. I know, right? The novel butt technologies, they should call themselves. The technology of butts. The art and science. <laughs> sure. Them. The novel will finally make it to the screen after decades of false starts. Oh, man. Uh, it's going to be uh, a TV series adapted from the famed William Gibson novel Neuromance where they are on Apple TV Plus. The stream ordered 10 episodes. They're loving their weird, obscure sci-fi whatever over at Apple, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. It's big fans. Who someone did, someone um, up there is a big nerd. Who did that show that was like, we're human, we're... Oh, Raised by Wolves. Was that Apple? I wish Raised by Wolves. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Ridley Scott did that That's or right. produced it, yeah. Uh, the order comes after decades of failed attempts to greenlight a screen adaptation of the 1984 science fiction novel. The most recent widely known failed attempt was by Deadpool director Tim Miller in 2017. Um, the, pr- the series will be helmed by showrunner, writer and producer Graham Rowland, who until now is best known for as the creator of the AMC TV series Dark Winds of Fihelmi- oh, um, and for helming the series Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan on Amazon Prime Video. Oh, your favourite show. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Nevertheless, I'm excited for this. The previous William Gibson adaptation was on Amazon Prime and it was The Peripheral, which again got cancelled after the season. I like some of it. Mm. Produced by Skydance, there we go. Uh, I think they're doing this one because uh, it's about uh, rogue AI. Yes. And I think somebody went, oh, AI's big. Isn't that a, are they doing a Tron movie? And then this. Then this. Okay. Led into that. Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't actually have the rights to Tron. Disney uh, has that and we're not Disney. We could buy Disney. Sure. But that might be tricky. So let's just see what we do. I don't think it would be. Just yeah. do it. Uh, it's rumoured that Robert Pattinson is going to be the lead. Ooh. Mr. Neuromancer. That's right. Get in here and put on this VR headset and smoke a cigarette. That's everything I know about Neuromancer. <laughs> Boy, this world sucks, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Put on the headset and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> God. So, uh, are you, so you, have you read this? Yes. And? It's good. It's a yeah, classic man. for a reason. Sure. Oh, is there a dog here? Yep. Give 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 the public some dog updates. Oh, she had dog surgery this week. Only had some dog surgery. She got four hundred teeth pulled out. No, six teeth on, or something. Now she's on serious pain medication. Yeah. So I. <laughs> she's a bit loopy. I I, uh, I said hello today. She was very excited. She jumped up in the air and then just flipped upside down in it in midair and just fell on her back. Because Mason pushed her. So I didn't push anybody. She's having a lovely time. Good work, Ollie. Good job. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. She's doing a great job, isn't she? Uh, do you want to talk about the Willy Wonka experience? Uh, sure. Let me, let's bring up some. Some images? Yeah. Yeah. So it was, a, it was basically some AI art that. Not just AI art. What do you mean not well, just? They also, the, the creators of this Willy Wonka experience. Oh, no, I know. Sorry, to lure people in. Yeah, but they also, but, but they also made an AI script. They got chat GPT. Oh, that's right. And they gave it to. They gave it to all the um, all the the staff that they hired, yeah. and were just like, just just make this happen. Yeah, just, just read. And it was this. just pages and pages of nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, that's what kids love. Well, that, I just mean, a also weird on the one hand, the idea that you would think that it was like 
a delightful, it was going to be a delightful chocolatey experience and then you go in and it's a nightmare world. That's quite true. That's to, very Willy Wonka. To, to yeah, Willy you're Wonka, right. Isn't it? You think they nailed it actually? Yeah, I think they did. Um, yeah. Boy, I wish I had the fly here because it's full of just. Lies? It's full, No, it's full of lies and bizarre. Um, like turns of phrase? Turns of phrase and it's just that AI thing where you go, have it make a flyer and half the words aren't real words because it's just sort of guessing at letters and stuff like that. And I love that everybody in it who was made to do it was like, it was, I don't, it was bad and yeah, yeah. we're sorry. But I mean, you <laughs> it's know. It's your fault. You are no, right. actor. All the people involved uh, seem to be nice except for one guy who got cancelled, I think. Here it that is. is. the power of the internet. Here's the flyer. Oh, yeah. Fucking these websites are awful now, aren't they? Uh, so it's... <laughs> It's some enchanting, enchanting entertainment. entertainment. Okay. It's Catgate Cat King, live performances, Karchi ch- t- Tons. What's this even supposed to speak? XR Surdere Lollipops, oh, yeah. uh, oh, a Pasadice of Sweet Teats. <laughs> <laughs> Practical info. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you got some dates there. Oh, only two days. Wow. Yeah, it's, got the, it's at the Box Hub Warehouse in Glasgow. Right. Which and it just turned out to be just a warehouse with a with a big kind of styrofoam rainbow, and every kid got a quarter cup of lemonade and a and a and one jelly and bean. one jelly bean, but no chocolate. No, I think that's great. And all there were some oompa loompas there, sort of. Yep. Oh my god, what a world! Yeah, what oh, a and, a, and a creature world. called the the unknown, <laughs> who was who was a man in a like a black drop sheet and a silver mask who hid behind a mirror, and he made chocolate, but he was evil. But no. there was no chocolate. <laughs> no, there was no chocolate. No, there was no chocolate at all. And he just scared children. And he scared children. No, I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I think that's absolutely wonderful. And that's uh, AI. That's, that's it is. Yeah. And I mean, look on a, on the one hand, this has created more entertainment for the world than a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. In a short burst that will be gone in a couple of days. I think. But, that, I mean, I feel like this is a one and done. This yeah, is, oh, absolutely. This is like this is like Coney twenty twelve. You know, this is AI. This is AI entertainment peaking right yeah. here. It's, it's and it's funny because it's like one of the first, you know, examples of this. Yeah. I don't know if it's the first. But I wonder if the creator is going to come out and go, yeah, we knew this was going to happen. This is actually this is actually the art. Oh, okay, right. Because that's what I would do in damage control mode. I'd be like, no, this was actually art. Yeah. And you all fell for it. This is like Banksy. Okay. You thought we were just massively incompetent and released this fly <laughs> that made no sense and, and expended no effort in an, in an effort to make a cheap buck. But actually this is Banksy. Yeah. It's Banksy. It's, it, it is Banksy in a way, though, Banksy isn't it? Banksy in a way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's fun. The Willy Wonka experience. Check it out. Yeah, it's um, it's too late. I know it's finished. It's, it's finished. It's finished. Why? Why wouldn't they do another run of it though? Why wouldn't I they do another run? Yeah, God. I mean, just the goal to think you could pull that off with what you had as well. <laughs> yeah, God. Just and not the, even just the stones. Not even proofreading the script. Just being like, Unbelievable. okay, well, we need we need one guy to be the unknown, and we need two Oompa Loompas, and we need a Willy Wonka. Yep, this will do. This will do. Fine. Yeah. Should we should we proofread any of this? Nah, no, I don't worry about it. Well, so you want Willy Wonka like interacting with like people. You don't want him and just giving them chocolate, just, perhaps. Yeah, and that, but like just doing a monologue. Yeah, but the, the goal. Do you not know anything about the goal to no, be obviously. like? Don't even give anyone chocolate on the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Like, not even one bit of chocolate. It's bold. It is bold. It's bold. That's why I like it. Yeah. Trailers Ahoy. Good right. start. Yeah. Trailers Ahoy. Hi. I got a couple here. We've Bork. got The Watchers, which is M Night's new movie. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit The Village. It's a bit the village, which was, sure. Which was one it's of a bit of the nice movies. house on the lake. Oh yeah, comic that comic book we, we talked read. About. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So it seems to be mm-hmm. that a woman she'd be lost in the woods. Yes. But luckily, she'd be rescued. Oh, that's handy. But luckily, movie over oh. for the monsters. Maybe monsters. There's actually monsters, and they come and look at them through a glass um, window that they can't see out. Coffee of. table. Coffee through table. A glass yeah. Coffee table. <laughs> Every night, and they yeah. just stand there and they're. Do we know for sure that they're monsters though? Well, that's maybe the, the real thing. monster is man. Exactly. Maybe this is a game show in the future. Yep, maybe, maybe it's not a window, it's a mirror. Maybe they're on a spaceship. Maybe, maybe it's aliens. On a spaceship, yeah. yeah. Can they go out during the day maybe? I don't know, and then at night they've got to get back in there. Maybe. In their watching window. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm intrigued. Maybe it's an alien kids program and they're looking through the round window or what have you. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, there's that's so good. many things it could be. Yeah, I know. Do you think we've guessed it in doing that? I think so. <laughs> yeah. But I think we should keep guessing. I don't think we should just wa- I don't think we should just go in, buy a ticket, watch it and, you know, let the – the, let the artistic uh, merit flow over us. I think we should just spend the entire time attempting to figure out the secret yeah. and, and I, be disappointed when it's not exactly what we wanted. And I don't even like the artistic merit flowing over me. Yeah. I find that actually a bit offensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Putting your artistic merit on me, <laughs> yeah. very presumptuous. I have an umbrella for artistic merit and I'll be right. using it. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. When's that one out? I didn't even uh, sometime in the future. Sometime in the future. Let me find uh, yeah. out. No, look, looks promising. Um, I like that he's just going back to doing low budget, low budget, and it's just, in a room. Yeah, and he's, uh, June 14th. So there you go. He kind of feels like he saw one of those kind of viral posts about look, here's a cozy little micro cottage out in the woods. Yes. What if there was horror in it? What if that had a big mirror? What if it had a big mirror and the mirror reflected the horrors of that our humanity? Oh and it God. wasn't cozy at all, even oh, though you would assume it would be cozy. I don't want that. I don't want mm-hmm. a bit cozy. That's right. It's not the only big epic trailer this week, though. We also had Horizon, an American Saga, Chapter 1. That's right. Which is out June 28th. Also a very cruel to put that at the end of this. <laughs> Part 1 of 2. Yeah, thanks. It's a long trailer, isn't it? Yes. Because anything that's longer than like 2 minutes 30, you really feel it. This mm-hmm. one's like 3 minutes something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is Kevin Costner doing Western epics again. Because he did Yellowstone for Yellowstone, a bunch of years yeah, and, and it looks like all those checks have cleared. Bunch of money and cred and whatever. Uh-huh. And, so and he's uh he's abandoned. He immediately quit Yellowstone as yep. I understand it and he's immediately back doing what he loves, which is the big movies. It feels like it was Made in the nineties, like the trailer feels that way. It does feel like that, it not, that's not yeah. a bad thing necessarily, mm. but it it does have that old kind of western, an well, old, I mean nineties kind yes, of that's right. sensibility to it, like lingering shots and swelling music, and like Kevin Costner, Kevin Costner romanticizing the old west and all of these kind of things that he loves, romanticizing the ladies. But also, he is romanticizing the ladies. But do you think, uh, like, there, is, like, he does also, you know, he he might be like, and Native American people. Like, you know, okay, you know yeah. it's not just uh-huh. cowboys. It's you yeah. know, it kind of feels like after Killers of the Flower Moon, anything kind of this this does look like a movie. Do you do, do you get this? Okay, right, I'm yeah. Going with like when you and and again, maybe in the cinema, I will. Uh, you know, this this I'll be the the artistic. You'll have a washer. Will over you. wash right over me. Not me. I don't know. Not me, of, Mason. I'm I, Teflon. I kind of feel like that that Killers of the Flower Moon. It was it was such an experience to go in and and just. Feel the reality of these characters and, and all those ugly heads looking all at those you. ugly heads and just go back to this. I'm like, boy, this looks like a real movie, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it looks like a every, boy. Every show has perfect teeth for for the old west, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I like about it. Uh, so yeah, that's chapter one is June 28th, but you only this have to year? yeah, and then nice. you only have to wait until August 16th of this year also to get wow. chapter two. Wow, yeah. that's a tighter turnaround than the Matrix sequels. I don't know. How do you think this is going to go? Great. Yeah. Yep. So do you ever see his wide up? Because there's Tombstone, and then there's I don't he know. Did a no, I don't think movie. I ever did. Unless I caught some snippets of it on the telly back in the. Apparently, day. it's more accurate and whatever. Yeah, because that that was the kind of the big. Um, that was what the year of wide up. Yeah, and Tombstone kind of I wouldn't say blew it out of the water, but I would I mean, say that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I nobody different. remembers what happens in wide up. And who's in it? No. Yeah. Costner and. Uh, I mean, you got Val Kilmer, mm-hmm. and that kind of that in itself like makes that movie. So yes, memorable. Absolutely. But God, you'd be shitty, wouldn't you, if you made the other <laughs> right. wider Which movie. came out first? And he called it wide up. He even yeah. put, the, put the name on it. Well. I don't know which came out first, actually. I can find out for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should have called Tombstone Everyone But Wider. Oh, my God. That's right. 1994, three hours and 32 minutes. Came Pam- out three hours and 32 minutes before. That's right. Oh, Kim, there we go. Dennis Quaid was Doc Holliday. Gene Hackman's in it. Jim Caviezel. He's one of your faves. He's not. I don't like Isabella him. Rossellini. These are all big names. Uh, so that came out June 24th. Of 94. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Tombstone came out in 1993. Oh, okay. Oh, pipped at the post and it's better. Or, or uh, they probably screened them, but early 1994. Oh, okay, right. So, yeah. Mm. And it doesn't, I don't think it goes for, and it only made like 10 million more. Now, so, do you think that, do you, it, let me ask you this, do you think this is a chip on the shoulder situation? Oh, okay. Do you think he feels like he was? And Tombstone only goes for two hours and 14 minutes. Mm, it's breezy. Boy, is it. Do you think? Do you think that Costner's here out here being like, I never got my due for for the westerns? Yeah, you know, I think people are really he did. He got, he got Dance with Wolves. He won an Oscar. That's it's true. Goes for five hours. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He did The Postman. It's a western, basically. <laughs> That's right. He did Mr. Brooks. That's basically a western. Basically, it's just a western, isn't a it? Western. Yeah. He did. Um, do you think he's going to like halfway? He did through whatever this... Tin Cup is. Yeah, did he do Tin Cup. That's golf, maybe. That's basically a western. Basically, I mean, those rolling planes. Just a western, right. straight up. Except it's par four or whatever. Par four. Mm. Wow, I love that. Par four, the course that he does a western. I agree. Mm. So anyway, good luck to him. Yeah, I think so too. If I had that kind of money, this is exactly what I would do. No, you make wouldn't. make a three and a half hour western where I'm the lead. <laughs> okay, you might do that, <laughs> but you'd also be, I reckon. You, your character would be sitting on a stoop. Yes, he would. He'd be old. Yep. But 
you don't have any old makeup, old man makeup on, because that would be effort. <laughs> but you're just sitting on a, you're sitting on a stoop on like one of those swingy chairs, yeah. Maybe on a on a on a porch, mm-hmm. and you're telling your kids about how you are a Western big big time cowboy, and then all the other stuff is done by other people. Yeah, it cuts to someone else doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who plays the hot priest? Him. <laughs> Andrew Scott. Andrew Andrew Scott. And yes. Andrew two three A's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. That's how he became famous. He was the first name in the phone book. Is that true? Andrew Scott. <laughs> All right, should we move it along? Yes. All right. All right. We're back to the world of Dune. That's right. With Dune Part 2 mm. on a budget of $190 million. Uh, this had some pretty good preview screenings in terms of numbers, Mason. Oh, yes. At time of recording, we're going to have final. But on the Thursday in the Isn't US. that just eating you up inside, yeah, James? Because you love me. having the numbers. I don't even know what to do. Mm. Uh, it made $12 million on on uh, Thursday previews, which is double that of the last Dune movie, but also COVID, et cetera, and whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Most of us watch it at home. Uh, but Luis Fernando on Twitter has given these insights. On the three-day US opening weekend, it's looking to make 80 to $90 million. That's a That's big numbers. The five day opening overseas is 100 to 110 and that would make its global opening with which excludes china 180 million to 200 million now seeing as this is like obscure star wars and and whatever uh uh-huh, sure and somewhat in- beloved by millions yeah 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 but it's i mean not star wars numbers no that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. it's somewhat more obscure and even though star wars borrows a bunch of stuff from mm. dune uh but but yeah. I think Danny Villeneuve probably borrowed some steer from Star Wars. He probably you. did. Yeah. He probably did. Well, he's also, and we'll talk about this, he's been storyboarding Dune since the 80s. Wow. Yeah, this okay. is like a passion project of him since he was he was a kid. A uh, little lad. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Mason. Go on. What do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Yeah, man. First of all, uh, remember, remember old Dune? The one from the 80s. No, 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 no. I knew than that. Uh, the one from two or three years ago. Yes. Yes, I do. It's a sequel to that, first okay. of all. Yep, great. Okay, so at the at the end of the last Dune, mm-hmm. every, everybody wants to live everybody wants to go to the planet of Arrakis. Yep. The planet of Dune. For the fracas. The fracas and the spice. Because mm-hmm. the spice lets you do crazy space navigation. Yeah, it's space navigation and drugs. And also drugs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, all good. Anyway, people love it. It's like it. huffing petrol. But it's basically. the it's the it's the only place you can get the spice. Yeah. Which raises the question, what did they do before the spice? How'd they navigate? How'd they get there in the first place? The answer is computers, if I recall, but then they outlawed computers. They outlawed computers? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't they have, like, um, their ships, their organic something? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that's something like that. Okay, I don't sure. Know. All right, okay. I can't remember. Mm. I haven't read Dune. I should preface this, that, this by saying uh, that. Preface of Dune. And you haven't read Dune? I've read some of First Dune. Wow. Yeah. Look at this guy. We're pretty good, aren't we? We've yeah. done our research. Together we've read some of Dune. That's right. But there are two houses. Yep. The, the well, two. there's more than that. Even I know that having not read Dune, but go on. That's right. And so, well, there's two important ones and the other ones suck and they know it. Yeah, they do. <laughs> In their heart of hearts, they know. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but it's the Atreides and the Harkonnens and, mm-hmm. Harkonnens and the, the Atreides are the good guys and they're all beautiful. Are they? Yes. Okay. And the Harkonnens are the bad guys. And they're battling over Dune. Yep. But also there's the Fremen who live on Dune. Yeah. And in the last movie, the Harkonnen killed all the Atreides. Yeah. Except well, they, for Paul they Atreides. They did. The most beautiful of them all. The most beautiful man. And he escaped into the Dunes. That's the right. Dunes. And in this one, mm-hmm. he's doing a big rebellion so he can he take over the galaxy potentially yeah. and become. That's right. Which is going to be good, I think. I foresee no complications. That's what I took from this. But I can't foresee the future, but he can foresee the future sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This guy's Luke Skywalker. In a way, sure. In a way, he is. <laughs> He's as cool as Luke Skywalker. That's right. He never gets anything wrong. That's what I like about it. Mm. I tell you what, Mason. Go on. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I did also. Uh, it's good that movies are good again. And they're back. We've had a few rough. Uh, we had a rough start. The entire first part of 2024 <laughs> up until this point. Pretty yes, much. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, a visual treat. I would say yeah. I haven't seen something this visually arresting since Argyle. Rebel Moon Part Argyle. One. I was going to say Argyle's. It's good yeah. too. You know, you like sci-fi epics, like I do. Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part One. Sure, I love that. How does that. this compare? To that? It's better than that, actually. Somehow. By how much? By what magnitude? Um, ten to one thousand times. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. And it's just, it's, it feels cohesive and it yep. feels massive. Yeah, and you know, in a way that it doesn't feel like it's just like, oh, look at this, cra- look at this society, aren't they crazy? How they live yeah. in this. It's a big city. Yeah. What do you think about that? I like it enough. Some stuff floats and they're floating. Ah, uh, there's uh, a spider lady. I mean, there was a spider lady in June 1. That's true. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. I don't really remember. Okay, but, right. yeah, no, you're right. And I think, yeah, everything, the, the world here, and it's 
they're not lingering on things that they kind of don't have to. When they do linger on something, it's for like story purposes or world building mm-hmm. and whatever, you know what I mean? Or to you drink in or whatever. Whereas I didn't like Rebel Moon. I don't know, I don't know <laughs> if anybody knows that. But like that just felt like slow-mo shots of just whatever, you mm-hmm. know? And this is like... Slow-mo shots of boring things. <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. Mm. Uh, so there was actually a uh, Times of London interview with Denis Villeneuve. who had this to say about dialogue. His name might be Dennis. Yes, it might be Dennis Villeneuve. Uh, he said, frankly, I hate dialogue. Dialogue is for theatre and television. I don't remember movies because of a good line. I remember movies because of strong image. Hasn't uh, seen Tombstone then, clearly. mustn't have, no. I got two guns, one for each year. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not interested in dialogue what if, at I'm all. I'm just saying what if Paul Atreides had said that. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. You know? I got two guns, one for you now and one for you in the future because <laughs> I can see in the future also. I got the blue eye. But we don't use guns same. anymore because no. of lasers and nuclear explosions. Sometimes they use guns. Like a knife. Like sniper rifles yeah, two and knives. stuff. He does have two, two knives. knives for you. Uh, he said, I'm not interested in dialogue at all. Pure image and sound, that is the power of cinema. But it is something not obvious when you watch movies today. Movies have, have been corrupted by television. Oh, I think also he understands cinematic language so much more than us, I would even say. Sure, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Mm, we'll that say. He is using language, but he doesn't have people just say the stuff. Sure, you know, absolutely. Like, yeah. It's all storytelling in yeah. this, and it's similarly with Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. You understand what is happening by emotions, expressions, context of the scenes that they're in. He's so good at doing that. James, you are doing a masterclass right now. Am I? Did Denis Villeneuve take your masterclass on, <laughs> he did. on the movies? And explaining the movies that he made? Yeah, yeah. he did actually, yeah. Wow. I just think that's... And he's like, I finally get it. <laughs> I finally get what I've been doing. <laughs> I just think that's... It's just really incredible. I think it's just... It's so precise and apparently he's storyboard. Well, as mentioned, he started storyboarding this in the 80s just for fun. Like he knew going into this exactly what he was looking for, which no doubt helped with the budget because a lot of this is done practically. I don't think there's a single VFX shot in this, Mason. Absolutely not. This is all for real. <laughs> yeah, there obviously is. We'll talk about it. But um, this is uh, they've also got this really interesting method of bringing this to IMAX. This is from cinematographer Greg Frazier. That's the guy. The guy. Who the main the... guy. Stray his own Greg Frazier. That's right, he is. What did he work on? He worked on some. He created the volume. There you go. Yeah. He's, he's the only one who can do it properly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Because he did the Batman as well. Because if you look at the Batman, mm-hmm. that uses the volume, but yeah. you fucking wouldn't know what to look at it. That's right. Um, so Dune was shot for IMAX digitally. Then it was transferred onto 35 millimeter film, which was then scanned back into digital. Oh. And the reason they do that, because if you, if you look at a lot of digital, and I guess you might say Avatar. It's too clean. So it's too clean. Whereas... The, the kind of the, the idea of using it just on film, mm. the aesthetic it might be too gritty and you might yeah. lose some detail. But by bringing it, it's, it sounds insane to do it this they way. They put it on 35 millimeter and then they buried it at Bondi Beach. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And they dug it up. And then, and then so you get kind of the best of both worlds apparently. Mm. And I think that's amazing that somebody figured that out. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, the cast, Mason. Oh, beautiful cast. Even the Uggos are beautiful. Even the Uggos have got something going on, yeah, don't they? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So returning Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, Stellan Skarsgård, Dave Bautista, et cetera. Mm, sure, sure, I sure, really sure. think that Timothy... And some secret. And some, some secret, secret stars mm-hmm. who are in the marketing, but... Yeah. Yeah. Might be in the movie for not very long. There's one bit of casting that I don't love, which we can talk about. It's not a spoiler. but It's Christopher Walken, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. It's nothing against Christopher Walken. Okay. But... um. You know, Timothy Chalamet, I'm glad they didn't shoot these back-to-back because something... He's in, gone better as an actor. Yeah, and I never disliked him. I think he's great. Uh-huh. I'm not really familiar with much that he's done aside from Dune and... Uh, Wonka? Wonka. Call sure. Me By Your Name or whatever I didn't he see did. that one, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not caught up with a lot of stuff. Like, he was in, he was in that movie where he's a cannibal or something? I haven't seen cannibal that Cannibal Kids? Cannibal Kids, A couple yeah. of cannibal kids. He's got... Like his presence is really kind of. I was going to say because so evolved, much of this movie yeah. is about the so so he is he's an off worlder, but mm. the Fremen, some of them, some of the the religious extremists in the Fremen have a prophecy that someone will arrive the geeks, from the nerds. Yeah, exactly. They'll arrive from off world. That's you, the audience, by the way. Oh, rooting for this idiot. <laughs> As someone will come from off world and they will free the Fremen. Whoa! And he is. Uh, some people think that he is he is the one yeah. because also he is he is one of the products of a a selective breeding program a secret selective yes. breeding program from a a a an order of all female kind of spies and, uh, kind s- of assorted troublemakers yeah. you know so so he is both yeah he's a manufactured 
prophet yes. kind of not messiah the one they, figure. Not the one they were expecting. No, because uh, they wanted a girl. So that, so Is that right? Yeah, like, so basically the idea in, in also in the Dune universe. Yeah, the Dune universe. The Dune universe. You can apparently choose what sex you want your children to be, yeah. and the idea was that, the idea was that Leto Atreides, who is um, Oscar Isaac and yeah. Rebecca Ferguson, were going to have a girl. Yeah, the idea was that the the, the Bene Gesserit, who are the the religious order, they the idea was that they were going to make them have a girl, and then House Harkonnen has a boy, and then we're going to marry them off together. Yep, and that was going to result in like unifying the power, and then the, the Ben and Jessica, we're going to have ultimate power in the universe, etc. But then they're building a Death Star, exactly. Of, but, through babies, yeah, yeah. But then, then the Atreides family decided to have a boy, so it's kind of ruined the yeah. situation. The universe, you ruined the universe. But yeah, so he, he, he is Timothy Chalamet has to play a guy who has a an alleged destiny that people yeah. believe, and then he has to become that. Yeah, he, he doesn't necessarily even believe it all. But he's, but, but is he going to buy into his hype? Yeah. And is he going to portray a man who is so charismatic mm. and and powerful who can do that and, and he can knife fight and he can knife fight and that is uh, and that that is a lot to put on one actor i think yeah especially one who hasn't you know who hasn't oh, i was in interstellar i forgot about that oh yeah barely yeah, he yeah. talked about that recently and he was like i cried when i saw that because i was barely in it yeah right, right yeah but i think there are some there are definitely some scenes and there are some scenes in this yeah that he he really rises to He's the great. challenge He's in this. Really, really good. He really, you know, you believe that he could, you believe that he could buy into that hype and 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 come into that power and convince everybody that he is there, even if he's not necessarily believe it. Yeah, um, right. Uh-huh. And I think it's also his motivations are interesting because it's initially just revenge, really. Yes, uh-huh. but then it becomes more than that. And all, I I love this idea, and apparently, not having read Dune, Frank Herbert. Saw a lot of people like miss. Frank this. Herbert hadn't seen. Hadn't he, read hadn't June. Even, he hadn't even read it. Yeah. Why would you? It's long. It's boring. Yeah. God, <laughs> he didn't even proofread it. Yeah, but um, that a lot of people took the wrong message from it, being that he's a messiah and he saved everything, and that's great. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, well, that's not what, and that's why he wrote like some some of those subsequent works because uh-huh. it's to be like. Actually, <laughs> that the sequel Dune, Paul Atreides ruins everything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was um, everybody really hates Paul. Everybody hates Paul. Yeah. Uh, anyway, in terms of new cast, I thought they were great. Florence Pugh's in this. Austin Butler plays Sperm Atreides in this. Just a big white sperm man. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, Leah Sidhu's in it. Well, apparently Austin Butler cut back the survive variety on his method acting for Dune Part 2, says Denis Villeneuve, and he was only 25 or 30% in character when the camera was off. Oh, that's good. That's still probably too much to be that guy. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah. that's really good, I guess. <laughs> he barely murdered anybody. He barely murdered anybody. But no, he was... But the remainder was Elvis, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He was... Really good as well. I agree. As the character Sting portrayed in uh, yeah. the Dune movie in the 80s. He's doing a very, I mean, speaking of accents, he's doing a very Stellan Skarsgård accent. Yeah, he's like yeah. the Harkonnens are from Sweden or whatever, yeah, it seems. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I, I, I think they they don't have a lot of screen time together. No. But they are sort of in, in, a, in a way meant to be the opposite numbers of one another. So they both have to be charismatic. It's Khan and Shatner or whatever Shatner's name sure, is. Sure, yeah. You know? Yeah. In those movies mm-hmm, yeah. and show, yeah. But yeah, the Christopher Walken casting just to me felt odd because I love he's Christopher the emperor Walken. of the universe. He's the emperor of the universe, mm-hmm. but it's just Christopher Walken, and he's got his his big Rick and Morty hair that he has sure, now okay, and whatever, yeah. Yeah. and he's just doing the Christopher Walken voice, which is of course he's that's doing his own voice. That's his voice, and that's who he is, and this is exactly what he does. And mm. he's never been bad. He's not even bad in this. I just think he's miscast. Where if you look at like Baron Harkonnen. Stellan Skarsgård, who Those took bloody like scars yeah, he took like eight hours to get into that suit and whatever uh-huh. and all that, and he couldn't go to the bathroom at all, and mm. and what like he used to take a modium so he wouldn't go to the toilet and whatever. You also watched the uh, Stellan I watched the Skarsgård, thing, yeah, exactly. Roles Great, really good. But um, whereas Christopher Walken's just like, "Hello, I'm the Emperor of the Universe," and it just didn't, I didn't work for me. What? What would you? Because, but I mean, he's. He he is bound by I just who think, he is. Oh no no! I just think not him is okay, my point. Right. That's what I'm saying. Don't cast him because if you look at those, you can only see him as Christopher. Yes, Walken. and I think in this, when you've got this, you kind of have to believe that you're on this planet and these people are aliens. And from, Christopher Walken is there. And Christopher Walken is there. That's right. that's my problem with it. Okay, like yeah. it, like Dave Bautista's in this, but I'm not like that's Dave Bautista every time I see him. Right. You know. So what if they gave him not? What if he doesn't have? What if? What if they gave him a different look? Maybe if he had a ponytail. <laughs> sure, okay. A cool ponytail. I see what you're saying, but I mean, even younger Christopher Walken, maybe I don't know. 
See, that's the thing. I didn't. I didn't feel because he's not. Again, he's not bad, and he's not in a lot of this. No, he's, he's not. got five minutes of screen time. I kind of felt like who would would have, would have been a better. Emperor of the Universe. And the other Star Scars guards, obviously. Well, oh, Ian sure. McKellen would be the obvious choice. I see. I Just would bring say him over. I would say Ian McKellen. I think. <laughs> no, that would be strange. I don't know. Um, fucking, Patrick Stewart. Well, he was, was in also Dune. in Dune. There you Who go. Who was he in Dune? The original one. Patrick Stewart. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, I was going to say Ian McKellen, <laughs> Emperor of the Universe. You know. Yeah. He was an old guy. He was an old British guy. A withered old. <laughs> one of the two Ronnies. Michael Ironside. I uh, okay. Sure. <laughs> yep. One of the two Ronnies, eh? Yeah, sure. Great, those are all good choices. Ronnie Corbett. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you know how they did the sandworms, the situation, in the book. <laughs> what does that mean? Which I haven't read, in okay. the book. I have a note here that says, um, Arrakis uber poor. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you summon the, them and you hope you the, get a good one. In the, <laughs> in the book, mm-hmm. apparently it's very vague on how you get on them. Okay. Whereas this, they they show you the process and yeah. it's, it's a, it's a real ordeal to get on a sandworm. And again, you want it to be a good one, not too small, not too big. Yeah. You know, you basically got to fall onto it and grapple it and then mm-hmm. control it using its kind of air pocket wavy things and whatever. Mm-hmm. And that all, I, I thought that was beautifully executed. A lot of that, they built like the back of a sandworm. Okay. Um, and like had, you know, sand and wind like blasting you in the mm-hmm. face as you kind of, this is something they spent a lot of time on getting right. Where if you look at like the original movies, it's just green screens and of course it is, 80s yeah. blue screens and just kind of floating uh-huh. up and down or whatever. Who do you reckon was the guy who was like, you know what, we should go with green? I mean, it's, I don't know. Do I, I mean, it was blue initially. That's what I'm saying. Well, before that, it was a whole different thing. I'm but saying yeah. it was the guy who was like, you know what, green would work better. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm, maybe because there's more that kind of blue in costumes yeah, and on probably. people. Yeah. In movies, yes. so I would say you don't. It doesn't have to be any particular color. That's true. It just needs to be a hard color. Yeah, that you can. You yeah, can cut out. You yeah. Can cut out. Yeah. So yeah, that all made sense to me. But yeah, but how do you, I don't know how you get fifty people onto one of these? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you slow it down? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you do, maybe you just have to keep doing laps, and one person gets on it. At one a time. at a time. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, there's a worm stop. There might be a worm stop. Might be a worm stop. What did you see this in, by the way? Regular format. No, I, extreme screen. I saw it in D box. Oh, did you really? Chair, which I turned right down. Of course. I didn't turn it completely off because okay. it's not a fun experience okay. to be sitting in a shaky chair every time someone fires a gun and yeah. and whatever. But I, I I would say if you can see this on like IMAX, like, it which IMAX, I couldn't yeah. I couldn't do. But um I there's so many like the action sequences in this, and I would say that not even that many, really. No. But there's a moment where they take down a like a walking kind of crab vehicle mm-hmm. and they're hiding behind the legs and there's like an ornithopter trying to like got them pinned down and all of that is just mm. – and it's just a helicopter and a crab leg. And a great sense of scale as yeah, well. Yeah, my God. Yeah. Just amazing. So good. So I don't know. It's just – movies are good. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes movies are good, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes movies are good. <laughs> Should we do some spoilers? Let's do some spoilers. I'm going to say best movie ever. Definitely best movie ever. Best movie of the year thus far? Thus far, definitely. Mm, I mean, until The Crow comes out. That... <laughs> yeah. South African Crow. Until man. Cody versus Acme gets leaked. Oh, no, Another no. Warner Brothers property. Yeah. There's no way this would have got greenlit under Zaslav if it wasn't, if the first one wasn't already like. Yeah, because he would have been like, oh, based on a book, boring. Yeah, no boring. way. Yeah. So, I don't know. Or themes. Don't like that. People get upset by the themes. Mm. Or it parallels real life in some way. Yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, best movie ever, obviously. Yeah. I would also say these aren't for everyone. Okay. It's like it's, it's like hard sci-fi. You know, there's you got to pay attention. you got to kind of be into this kind of thing, I guess. I've, I've, I saw some reviews. Uh, I, I, I saw it and then I composed my thoughts. And yeah. then I'm like, I wonder what other people have to say about this. And I saw a couple of reviews that were basically along the lines of, if you didn't see the previous one, you wouldn't understand what was happening here. I think you would. Yeah, I would say see the previous one. Yeah, uh huh. Would you say it's stronger than the previous one? Because people are saying it's more action packed and whatever. Uh, and whatever they say. Yes. Yeah, but it also I think these obviously work well. Mm. <laughs> Two movies that you should see. Maybe not in this order, but yeah, there was an IMAX double feature yeah. in Melbourne, and I thought, I don't know if I can sit through five plus hours. Do they have a break in the middle where you can? Go to the bathroom? No, they gave you one of those things you put up your nose. Oh, no. Yeah, and you had to pee out of that. <laughs> oh, I like how nobody sweat in this as well. If you're in the desert, you can't sweat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, yeah, I saw an interview with Javier Bardem where he's like, I'm a big sweater, so and I'm not supposed to sweat because you're yeah. not supposed to be wasting water in the desert. Uh-huh, sure. Mm, yeah. And they fixed that? 
just mopping him down. Just mopping, he takes just mopping. Yeah, because right, he's just out there in the desert, mm. just eating sand all day. People yeah. fainting and wearing big costumes yeah. and all of that. Anyway, so there's a few things they change. This is spoilers. Okay. Uh, so the the Baron who gets killed by Paul Atreides in this. Yes. Uh, his name's Paul, and I love that. Um, he's killed by a baby, <laughs> by Rebecca Ferguson. Rebecca baby. Ferguson has a baby. Yes, I was reading again. I haven't she's read talking it. to throughout she's the talking, movie, which I liked. But it's a baby that uh, it's like it's a baby that demands exposition. Yes, it's, it wants to know what's going on in the world. Yeah, but it's a it's oh, a you can talk, but you can't look around. Baby, great yeah, stuff. It's like a wise little baby that kills this mm. guy. Yes, and I think this is probably a better way to interpret that i sure, think that's okay, a strange yeah. thing to kind uh-huh, of yeah. drop into this universe i don't know mm. what do you what do you think for this version because he's pretty faithful on the whole oh okay but um, um yeah no i'd rather he be killed by paul and not a baby yeah <laughs> the the sentiment i am gathering on twitter is even big fans of the original books are like yes a lot of changes have been made but it's mostly for the better and it yeah. works with this narrative nobody seems and not to, to say the book is bad but no but i mean nobody's yeah. nobody i can't see a lot of people out there going the changes, you know, that are very precious about the material and are saying, okay, no, it must be adhered yeah. to completely. So, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another one is that a lot of the characters in this, the female characters, including uh, Zendaya's character, mm-hmm. th- she's on board with him being the the big prophet messiah guy at the But in end. the movie, not so much. Yeah. And I, I, thought, don't think, I think that was... I like that too. Yeah, again, I didn't know where that was going to go, but, I mean, obviously the, you know, she she tells him that she'll love him for as long as he stays who he is and he's like, well... I got some news for you. Got some news for you, baby. I think that's interesting. I'm going to change who I am because he, he drinks the worm, the worm poison at one sure. point, so he can see the future. Mm-hmm. So he knows who he's going to turn into. He yes. knows that by taking over as emperor and then entering into a war with all the other houses, all the shittier ones, yes, who won't, who don't accept his legitimacy, mm-hmm. that it's going. There's like millions of lives are going to be lost, mm-hmm. and he still walks into that role knowingly. Mm. I thought that was really interesting. And then to have her go, I don't love this actually. Yeah. And apparently uh, Denis Villeneuve did this purposefully because the idea, behind, again, behind the original tune, which I haven't read, <laughs> is that he's not a hero. He's a bad guy. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. it's something that he eventually comes around on. And Because you, know, you don't want him to be the guy who shows up on this planet with all his indigenous people and is like, yeah, no, I'm here to save you actually. Yeah. Oh, and it worked out. Yeah. That's great. And also, as mentioned, like he's manufactured. He's not... You know, he, he is a prophet, but he was... It's In a, a way, we're all manufactured. It's the way that... It's the same way that Anakin Skywalker was, was made, you know? Oh. Who did it first? Who's to say? Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert, probably. Decades ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I also thought it was really interesting because she did some crying earlier. But then later as she's leaving, you can see she's upset and whatever, but then she steadies herself and she's not crying. And she's sure. like, I'm not shedding tears, uh, tears for this fucking guy. I'm that's right. writing a big worm out of here. That's right, yeah. We're enemies later, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's right. He's going to marry somebody else. That's not cool. He said he wouldn't do that. Or he didn't say he wouldn't do that, but it was implied that he wouldn't do that. That's right. That's what I it's thought. It's sort of implied by all the kisses we did. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I was going to, just a stray thought, I love the Harkonnen home planet. Yeah. They've got kind of a, uh, that's, how you, that's how you do an alien world. It reminded me of the game um, Killzone, which this may borrow from. Oh, yeah, Which who so? did it first, who's to say? That's a great point. I haven't point. read the book, but go on, yeah. But they had those kind of like ink fireworks. Yeah, that, I really like that, that was too. A great, that was a great like inspired bit of effects work. You yeah. Know? You know, pretty God. Good. Black That's and pretty, white world, pretty cool. Yeah, I think I think that was was the idea behind that. That there was a did they say it was a black sun. They did, yeah. Is that so? Is that like a, a perspective, like similarly to um, Oppenheimer, or was that just what that world looks like? Just a horrible. Black I think that's and white what it world. looks like because there are moments in it where they they move out of the shade, they right. move into the shade rather, and you can see them in kind of. Normal hue. Oh, okay, but right. But when you go into the sun, everybody's completely black yeah, and white. So, because yeah, because when you also when they arrive on planet Dune, they're mm. not they're not completely white. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, also, Anya Taylor Joy is the baby. That's correct. Yes. And that's fun, I guess. Yeah. Um, this is a book spoiler, so people might want to avoid this. Okay. Um, when does Paul turn into a big worm? What book? I is don't that? think he does turn into a worm. Doesn't I think he turn into I a think worm? it's his son who turns into a worm. Oh my god! Yeah, it's, Le- it's Leto the second who turns into a Jared worm. Jared Leto the second. Now he's going to appear, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's three. What were you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I can't go to any fashion shows. God, he week. would have loved to have been the lead in this, don't oh, you think? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, he was in Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. Being Jesus Maybe or whatever. he showed up and he's like, 
My name's the same name as the guy. Think Come about on, it. Come on, I could be the adult version. I could turn into a big worm. Come on. I'm already a big slippery worm. That's right. Yeah, so that's fun. Mm. All right, cool. Um, anyway, we're getting one more from Denny Villeneuve. Yeah, he said he's going to do Dune Messiah. I've got the list here. He's working. He's going to do Dune Messiah. Yep. He's going to do Rondé. Isn't that more with... like an epilogue kind of than a... I don't know, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't right. know. Go on there. Uh, he's going to do Rendezvous with Rama, mm-hmm. which is by either Isaac Asimov or Arthur C. Clarke. I yep. can't remember. He's going to do a, a, a version of Cleopatra, and he's going to do Secret Project. He also mentioned this week that he loves the aesthetic of the Batman Beyond universe, and he'd love to do like a Blade Runner well, maybe, slash Batman Maybe movie. that's Secret Project. I would love him to do and that. That's Warner Brothers. That's Warner Brothers, and he could do a, he could do a Batman movie. Why not? Give him a Batman Give movie. Batman Give, let him movie. do bat, let him Let him make a movie that makes money. <laughs> Yeah. I think this is the first this one. This one is going to make some money. Exactly. Yeah, so that it's, way, his, yeah. it's his first one that's going to make exclusively makes amazing movies that Isn't mostly that fascinating? don't do well. How, how has he made his way to this point? Because they're very good. They're very good, but Hollywood doesn't care, especially mo- – I guess he, he got in on Hollywood at the point where creativity was still rewarded. Yes. Like if this was his if, – if, if – like you said, if they would attempted to make a Dune now and they did it and it didn't make any money, he'd be out the door. They'd kill him. They would kill him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm just yeah, I'm just looking at his box office. I mean, like prisoners and like their sure, this and like enemy and all of those ones. Mm. They're like smaller projects, but he's big. Like so, like Blade Runner bombed like oh, horribly, yeah. despite yeah. being arguably. I wouldn't even say arguably. It's better than the first Blade Runner, and oh. even better than the movie Soldier, which is also oh. set in the Blade Runner. It's better universe. than the TV series Neuromancer. Uh, Impossible to say, isn't it? Uh, no, it, it probably is. Yeah. Got some reviews here, though. Yeah, go on. From people who have written in yes. on either Twitter or our Facebook Great Mates group. Oh, yes. Nate says, I mean, it's best movie ever for the Dune Part 2, but those legitimately calling it the best movie ever are almost certainly the same people who said the same about Avatar when it came out, only to vaguely remember it a few years later. I think it's much better than original Avatar. Okay. And I think this will be remembered. Sure. Very I fondly, mean, but. you know, and if you compare this to say most recent Avatar, yeah, I'm sure there are people who are like who are who are very st- feel very strongly about either one of those. But I think they're kind of it's it's sort of to me it's an apples and oranges kind of thing. Yeah, Avatar: The Way of Water is a technical showcase. Yes, that has a plot that is decent. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. And I mean, there's emotional stakes in that movie, and I'm sure people like were very yeah. moved by that movie. But I feel like this this one had more. Emotional stakes that I could believe in, I think. Absolutely. But I think, you know, from a technical perspective, it's good and the scale is good and the effects are good, but I'm 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 not intellectually I'm not blown away by what they did in this movie. It looks good, mm-hmm. but I think the 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 things that Cameron achieved in the way of water, incredible. You know what I mean? Better than this, would you say? Better the than movie, this. Avatar 2 is better than this movie. That's what I'm saying, yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, this no, guy. I'll, I'll say anything. Gibson Crandall says, as a movie, I think Detune is nearly flawless. As a huge book fan, I'm slightly more conflicted but still really love the movie. Uh, Alexis Gentry, who you might know as Trashwire. I do. Very social media. Uh, she said, I absolutely loved it. It gave me the same feeling as when I saw Lord of the Rings in theatres for the first time. Just an amazing cinematic experience. Nate says, just saw, or Nate flicks and chill. There we go. That's a good name. <laughs> just nice. saw Dune Part 2. Dennis Villeneuve uh, is that Maddie, M-A-H-D-I, of cinema. Best movie ever, seriously, That's though. the top guy. It is. It's seriously one of the best movies ever. Red uh, Line Flame says, I recently saw the movie Wonka and I was surprised how good it was. I really enjoyed it. Matt Berry would be the perfect choice to play another Oompa Loompa and Matt Berry can sing. It's a good point. And Ryan Newer says, best movie ever. I loved it and spent much of the run, run time thinking, I can't believe they let this get made. Yeah, me too. I left the theatre. <laughs> there's, an, there's an episode of How Did This Get Made? Yeah. A good movie. Uh, I left the theatre 12 hours ago and I'm still gathering my thoughts. Uh, yeah, all in all, it seems like people are enjoying the movie Dune uh, a lot. Dune. Dune. So there you go. Dune 3, I guess, three years away at the very least probably. Maybe. Yeah, Assuming Warner Brothers is still around. Because I think that picks up like, I mean, having not read the book, mm-hmm. um, like nine or so years after, isn't it? Or like a decade of war and atrocities and, and then Paul Atreides sure thing, is man. like, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe my son should become a worm. <laughs> Oh, come on, Dad. No, you've got to become a worm. Did you come like on, the mate. little worm? Yes. Also, the worms are like, that's the sarlacc, you know, sort of. In a way it is, isn't Who it? Who did it first? <laughs> we don't know. Impossible to say, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Cool.
And I know and spice, etc. There's a bunch of other stuff. I know. I know. Get sticks and so forth. You don't need to email me, all right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right, shall we move on to the next segment of the show? Yes. But what is it? It's what we're reading. Yep. What are we going to read? Whoa. I'm doing the theme. Whoa, this is the segment of the show where we're talking about things we've been watching and reading and doing. That's and right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, well, you know, you know. Um, I know everything. Yeah, that's right. You know. Uh, I drank that worm poison, so I know oh, everything. Oh, now you know everything. I do, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'm going to do some bad stuff. And you're on board I hope that? this doesn't age well. No, it does. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You don't want to get cancelled? No. Okay, great. Yeah, for doing bad stuff. Uh, so uh, people would know film director and actor, sometime actor, Werner Herzog. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but he has a, an autobiography out. It's called Every Man for Himself and God Against All, <laughs> which is the name you would make up as a fake autobiography for yes. Werner Herzog. But not only that. Uh, he reads it, I assume. Yes, he does. Of course. So there's a, there's a paper copy, and I was going to get the paper copy, but then I'm like, I'll just check because I've got Spotify Premium. Mm. And if you've got Spotify Premium, you get a certain amount of free audio books. Yeah. They have a select list, and, and you can just sort of dive in in whichever one you want. And most of your money goes to Joe Rogan, and this is just a great pipeline. Exactly. That, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's Werner Herzog reading his, his autobiography. And it, initially, Love it does that. sound a little bit like a guy doing an impression, doing an impression of Werner Herzog doing like Dr. Evil monologues. Like, you know, in, in is it the first Austin Powers where he talks about his, his childhood? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very funny. Yeah. Like it, it, he's, uh, what a, what a, what a storied existence this guy's had. God damn. Yeah. It was like, uh, it was like a wrestling heel for a while as the really? German. Yeah. yeah so. Did that one about caves or whatever? Sure. Yeah, no, no, he's always, he did, did he do Grizzly Man? No. But he, that I'm was sure the grizzly man. He would. I mean, I know. He, but the movie. Really I don't think good. he did. No? no. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, anyway, that's. Exciting. And he was in the Mandalorian for some reason. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I need to see the baby. <laughs> I've also been watching on on. There's a Disney Plus Hulu show called Death and Other Details. Okay. It was Werner Herzog. Okay, he did do go. the grizzly right, man movie. Go. Sorry, that's go right. on. Um, Death and other details. It's um. It feels very much like they went. Okay, we need a kind of knives out glass onion kind of situation. It's set on a cruise ship. Yeah. And there's there's been a murder and there's there's two people on the a boat that are linked together. There's a but anyway, it's got Manny Patinkin in it. And that's yes. that's pretty much the reason why the I jumped on now. it. And I'll tell you what tell you what, it's okay. Well it's got a fifty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, so it seems pretty, like yeah, it is okay. It's pretty uh like I I I definitely feel like they've gone, let's do a yeah let's do a let's do a glass onion, let's do a little bit of murder on the Aaron Express. Let's kind of, you know it feels kind of like they. I've never even heard of this. It feels kind of. I saw a. I saw a billboard ad for it, and I'm like, oh, I'll give that a try. Um, it feels kind of like they they rolled the dice randomly of like the setting and the yep. the quirks of the investigator and right. The, Who is the investigator? Oh, it is Manny Patinkin. Patinkin, Patinkin yeah, yeah. And, and like their link, links to the other people and you know. You didn't decide to watch the show Shogun, which is apparently incredible. And also I heard, well, that, you know what I did is I switched it on and I watched it for about thirty seconds, and I'm like, I need, I need. Because a lot of it is in Japanese. Yeah, I need to set everything. You need to aside. learn Japanese. I need to learn Japanese. I need to set. I need to set a lot of stuff aside yep. and, uh, and and do it like that. So completely agree. Yeah, but uh, that's next on the list, Shogun. I think. Awesome. All yeah. right. What about you, James? What have you been doing? Uh, I watched a documentary. Oh, here it's we go. It's called "Here Comes a New Challenger." It's uh, directed by Oliver Harper, who does these documentaries every few years. Uh, he also has a, a great YouTube channel. He's got a great review channel and does various other things on there. He also does a lot of retrospectives on like, this is every Robocop game and whatever. And oh, what's yeah. good or what bad about them. But anyway, here comes a new challenger. Details the origins of the gaming phenomena that is Street Fighter 2 and how it impacted the lives of kids and teenagers worldwide. So it covers the first Street Fighter game and like uh-huh. the mechanics behind it and what like fighting games were prior to Street Fighter. Sure. And then like... The the explosion of Street Fighter 2 and then the multiple versions and updates that came from that and then, like, the weird ports that happened uh-huh. and, like, people who would, like, crack, like, arcade machines and make faster versions and you can do different things yeah. and whatever. And then they talk, they talk about, like, the first movie. They don't get into the second one, which is probably for the best. Um, and the weird, like, and the shift in to fighting games into 3D and how like then Street Fighter was kind of archaic and the games that came up against it, like Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct and all of that. It's like two hours and 22 minutes long. So it really like gets into the weeds Uh of Street Fighter, which is what I like. Yes. I like, I don't want a vague kind of thing. Is this on your YouTube or do I have to find it somewhere else? No, okay, so 
It's on, if you go to SF2, as in the number two, doc.com, you can get either a limited like physical copy on Blu-ray or whatever, but you can also buy it on Vimeo, which is where oh, I bought it. Okay. And you can also download it from Vimeo if you uh, wanted to watch it on whatever else. But um, yeah, I just like, because I feel like a lot of these documentaries and you see them on Netflix, it's just like, and then there was this and then they made this version and then they kind of, but this is like, okay, so there was this version of Street Fighter uh-huh. that some lunatic made and it's better because of this, this and this. <laughs> uh-huh. and they And it gets into, it's, yeah, it's, this probably, like commercially this would be like an hour and a half max. And Did it get into Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter? Some of it, yes. Marvel it does. versus yes, Capcom. They do all of wow, that. Wow, yeah, wow. They do everything. Street Fighter Alpha. Yes, they talk about Street Fighter wow. Alpha. They talk about Street Fighter 3. Wow. They talk about like, they, there, was a, like there was like a web series in the 2010s and they get the director of that in and, huh. and all of that. It's just a lot. Again, they don't talk about The Legend of Chun-Li, the, ga- the movie, like <laughs> at shame. all. I think that doesn't come That's up. That's interesting. Okay. Maybe they couldn't get any of the footage. But they talked to the director of the Street Fighter movie and kind of like what he was going for and also the disappointment around that and why mm-hmm. and people are like, why did they make this version of it? There's no Street Fighting in this, but kind of the cult following of that. Yeah. And that was also made into a video game with di- the digitized actors yeah, and the whole Carly thing. Yeah, Carly Benoke's in that game. Yeah, it's a whole thing, man. Um, yeah. Anyway, I really liked it um, and I like his YouTube channel a lot. So, again, it does really get into the weeds, which is, okay. again, Great. Sp- one of the specific reasons why I really liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Very yeah. cool. Don't give me a vague whatever Street Fighter. Yeah. You know? Somebody who watch, who's watching a Street Fighter-specific documentary doesn't want – and then it, and it was very popular. And then, Street, and then years later they made Street, Street Fighter, Fighter 2 Turbo and or then, whatever. Yeah, no, it was, no. And then yeah. even this like hearing about the home ports and being like, okay, so these were the limitations of the home system and this is yeah, and this uh-huh. is what they had to do to get around it and whatever yeah. and the pixels, are the sprites are different size. And uh, I'm like, oh, I love this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love I mean, all of this. Because I, I remember that era when they were just like, they had to port it to everything. Yeah. And they were like porting it to like the NES and the Game Boy. Yeah. And at one point they they – it's on the Amiga and it's yeah, it was dreadful. On, it's on the Spectrum, the yeah. simple, the, the eight bits, like which is like a sub Commodore sixty four yeah. computer from like the you know it was by the time Street Fighter was out in like nineteen ninety it was already obsolete. This yeah. thing, but they like they they put they everything you know they they gave it giant sprites and they would like move like molasses. Yeah, you know because it was they so, talk about the Tiger Electronics one. Oh my god, just all of that. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, again, it's at uh, sf two doc dot com. Cool, uh, but you can. You Google it, you'll be able to find it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. neither of us watched uh, Shogun. No. I, I was saying with you, I'm like, I need to learn Japanese and sit down. I'll yeah. try and watch it this week. Mm. Isn't it a couple episodes out or is it all out? They're saying it's Game of Thrones no, it's but two, Japan. It's two, it was two episodes out and then the rest is week to week. Game of Thrones but Japan, they say? Mm-hmm. I read a tweet today, James. Game of Japan. Game of Japan about sort of George R.R. R. Martin and his legacy regarding Game of Thrones. And how he thinks he's better than me. Yeah, that's right. He said that. Yeah. It's not even true. I mean, <laughs> I don't think it is. I mean, if we're going to be honest, <laughs> but I mean, the 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 long and the short of it was basically about how, like, and the discussion around it was sort of about how it takes him so long to write these that maybe he's, he just doesn't. Well, he just doesn't. But <laughs> his whole the, his whole outlook on the world that he's created has probably changed oh, since okay. he started. And like, yeah. how do you end a, a saga if you had a particular? outcome in mind when you started and yeah. because his he apparently also he sort of writes to character in the sense that it'd be like okay well this character encounters this problem what would they do die well they might get die. stabbed or get their might, eyes stabbed or they out. might just like wander the desert for a year or something like that yeah. which means he can't just you know and and the 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 criticism of the last season of game of thrones was basically the created the the pro- producers were just like we need to get to here at the end so let's just say these characters. Yeah, go normally there'd be three episodes where they yeah, yeah. have to get. Let's there. just say Amelia Clark's character goes crazy. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. you can't, you know, and that's not that's not satisfying for a character to just suddenly kind of no. you know, snap. But you know, so he it takes him a really long time to sort of get characters into places that where it's narratively satisfying kind of thing. And also like the the, the idea that maybe it's he maybe he's like if if he were to before he finished the last book. Yeah. If he were to die or to become a recluse that never gives interviews or mm. anything and never goes out in public, he would be a guy who made like nine tenths of a of the the big you know the, a fantasy masterpiece. Yeah. But if he finishes it and it's bad, then he's that guy. He's a guy who who really you know yeah. he really shanked it. So at where the did, end. where did this start? Where, no, where just did on you Twitter say, somewhere. Just on Twitter. Just a Twitter convo. Just a Twitter convo. Oh, that's interesting. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get in on that. No. Maybe he's not better than me. Can't even finish his. I'm going to finish this podcast. Are you, though? Yeah. 
Wow. As she was talking then, I just thought that like, God, this is weird. People listen to this. Right. And that's not because of just what you were saying. But mostly just, that. <laughs> yeah, it was mostly yeah. you because it was just really not that engaging. I know. <laughs> no, that is interesting. Genuine. Yeah. I want, I mean, can he even f- like in the time left in his life potentially, how many yeah. books has he got? I don't even, I don't even know where they're at. There hasn't been one for Well, because that's, and then, so again, like long. I said, because it is, he, isn't, he isn't doing it the, the, the wrong way. He's not doing it via plot and just saying we have to get to here. Yeah, he's gonna. He he, he looks at every character and see has, sees how they interact, and he goes, okay, what would they all do in this situation? And he just sort of has a mosey around. Yeah, to their dramatic situations and a conclusion. So yeah. Oh God. So the original book of Game of Thrones is from 1996. The next one was 99, and then 2000. So that's uh-huh. good. Uh, and then 2005, and then 2011, and that was it. Yeah. Right. And the Winds of Winter, and then A Dream of Spring is. So he's got. He's, he's saying he's going to knock it off in two. I also think there's a possibility. Yes. That he is close to finishing a lot of this, and he's tinkering, and he's just going to one day just be like, "It's all done." Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Or he's doing a lot of cocaine parties in Hollywood, and he's Whatever, like, "Man, that's cool." Too. I don't. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I only care about <laughs> cocaine. That's right. I used to care about a, a you know a, a deeply detailed fantasy world of my own creation, but now I'll, that's before I discovered cocaine. Exactly. And now every day is a. <laughs> Deeply detailed fantasy world God. of cocaine. I think it's uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. All right, then. What a fascinating human being. Isn't he, though? Yeah. Um, also, oh, yeah, that's right. I think it's funny. Every time he's like, he starts to write something else or hints that he's going to do in some kind of other project, yeah. whatever it is, people are like, no! Finish Game of Thrones! <laughs> finish Game of Thrones! I think they will get finished, even if it, like, he doesn't finish these. Somebody will finish them. Oh, absolutely. Like, he'll have to. He'll have to bequeath it yeah. in, either in his will or just to me to, yeah to you and then, you're I interesting. and then i won't do it yeah <laughs> he'll 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 pass it along and then somebody will take a crack and everybody will be like well you know game of thrones game of thrones interesting i mean it really is called the song of ice and fire but whatever no it's called game of thrones it is called days. game of thrones like, he said i he said i renamed it game of thrones <laughs> that's right mm. uh should we move it to letters letters I hope you got that theme ready oh i've got it ready do you have the youtube app on your phone yeah that's great Free. The classic one was the letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. We are going to do letters. We certainly are. And if you do want to give us a letter, give us a letter. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. That's or right. Or Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail. You better believe it. Dot com. That's right. Got any letters, Mason? Here's an email from Zach. Zach. Hey, James and Mason. Hello. I've been listening to Caravan of Garbage for over a year. Well, it's also a video, so you could watch it also. Well, he's got no eyes. Oh. Just recently I started. I didn't know that. Well. I just want to say I didn't know that. Hmm, interesting. When I earlier, when I thought I'd get cancelled, this might be it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Podcast host says someone with no eyes should just look at a thing. <laughs> well, it's not that easy. I didn't it? know. Wow. Well, just recently I started listening to the Weekly Planet podcast at work. Uh, when I learned you take letters, I was so excited. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's inquired this before, but as an American, I wanted to get a couple of Aussies' perspective on this hypothetical. If they were to dust off the Crocodile Dundee franchise and reboot it, do you think <laughs> Aussies would be excited or upset? And which Aussie do you think would be the best suited to the role and leather vest? Personally, I think Jason Clark. Presumably this hypothetical oh, yeah. reboot is also a comedy. Maybe Eric Banner if it was I a mean, pretty serious they're take. all comedies technically. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Technically. Uh. Um, I don't know. How would we feel about it? I mean, there was that ad campaign from, from a few years ago. It's got Danny McBride as the son of Paul Hogan. That's and, right. And Chris Hemsworth. And did we like that Yeah, and there was a second where we are like, oh, this could be interesting. And then he did that thing that was like, it's the fantastical Mr. Hogan or whatever. Yeah, that? And which like I watched. A, and what was it like? <laughs> it was bad, but I liked it. Was, it. was it a narrative? Yeah, it was the life of Paul Hogan as he is now living in L.A. Right. And like his, avoiding taxes, yeah, avoiding allegedly. taxes allegedly, and uh, and like the shenanigans that come with it. But there's stuff in that where kids are like, "That's Crocodile Dundee," and I'm like, "Nobody, no nobody kid would knows recognize. that." No, absolutely not. <laughs> he no. looks completely different, and yeah. no kid has seen Crocodile Dundee. I, I mean, I don't think Australia would do it. I don't, I don't think, think the Australian would, film industry would, would would do it. I don't think he'd give it up either, alive. You don't think, I think he'd want to do he'd it. want to be Crocodile Dundee yes. again. I mean, I could see that. He's so old, man. Yeah, he is. Also, as I understand. We've, <laughs> he was I, old when he did that. Yeah, no, I feel like we've talked about this as well, but apparently he gets, he. he he's 84. Yeah, he's 84. <laughs> I mean, he could do like, 
I could see a version where he's Crocodile Dundee and he's really old. Okay. And that's that's the gag. I'm Crocodile Dundee. I'm real old. Look at this. Look at him. Yeah. He's a million years old. Well, he looks pretty good for a million, a million years old. A million years old, yeah. What if you did a version where he's Crocodile Dundee and any time it cuts to it, like he does a stunt, it cuts to like a really obviously not him guy? I think it should cut to an even older man. <laughs> Just being flung across a ravine <laughs> or whatever on a whip. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Look, man, he owns it all. If he wanted to do it, I yeah. would I, I, I would love to see that. Sure. Just give they give him another crack at it, but yeah. I don't know. I, I think, think there's a certain segment. There seg- will be something. Something yeah. will happen at some point. I think a certain segment of the Australian public would be genuine, like unironically excited I agree. to see I another. I think we even, when that ad happened, we thought it might be a movie. Yeah. Yeah. But as have we also talked about how apparently he gets in there like – and he'll look at the script and he'll do some rewriting. So, yeah, he's very so he can get another credit. On yeah, the, on the on money, the, on the money, on yeah. the money, on the money. Allegedly, yes, these are the things that he does. Whenever we talk about allegedly. Australians, we have to say allegedly because the libel and slander laws in Australia are very. Uh, That's right. Very, uh, very, very strict. cool. They're cool, allegedly. Yeah. But also, he's not here. No, he's not here. It's true. <laughs> Um, Jason Clark is also too old. I think you need a really young guy. Again, I think he was like at least 45 when he did the first one. Yeah, right. So I think that's yeah. fine. You could go that old. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, th- I I think, like, remember when they did, like, they did the St- Starsky and Hutch? You know when they, they did the Brady Bunch reboot? Yeah. The Starsky and Hutch where it's like, we like the property, but we're also making fun of the the, yes. the, the tropes of it and – I think you'd have to do it like that, but I would be very curious as to know whether Paul Hogan would want to do it. Because I think that's the only way to do it and make it successful or or palatable to to audiences is like we remember this character as sort of an old joke. Yes. And most people but most people don't remember it. But we remember kind of the the, the outward, you know, this and this that's not a knife, this is a knife. Like that's all that people remember. This is a knife. And if you turn it into like a kind of satire of of rebooting old properties. I think it could work, yeah. But that relies on Paul Hogan going. Yes, I would like that. Like we have to acknowledge that it's kind of a joke, yeah. But I, as you mentioned, with the magical, fantastical, phantasmagorical it's called Paul Hogan, the very excellent Mister Dundee. Did it feel like John Cleese and Chevy Chase and Olivia Newton John are in? It. <laughs> did it feel like he was he'd be willing to be a punchline? Yeah, a little bit, a okay. little bit, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know. Well, let's make it happen, folks. Let's do it. Where's the Alby Mangles movie? Let's start a GoFundMe. Let's. <laughs> oh my God! Here's this one, this Paul Hogan's punching. He's still punching darts. Absolutely, is yeah. God bless him. Mm. And he's wearing a leather jacket. I guess also he was kind of a parody of himself of like an Indiana Jones style character. Yes. Right. Yeah. Those are like the first two, at least. They're right. they're kind of endearing. They're like very of their time and whatever. But there's yeah. like a, there's a charm to them. Because it's about a woman who goes to the out, an American woman who goes to the outback, and she meets she meets Paul Hogan, and yeah. they got married in real life. Oh. Though they recently divorced. Oh, um, yes. Punches too many darts. That might be the reason. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's why. Uh, Zach also has a backup question. Mm-hmm. What's the most egregious, deplorable example of an Australian accent in film? It's in Pacific Rim, I think. Oh yeah, so those two Australian guys. A couple guys of those. Ones, yeah, Rim, yeah. I, I like them though. Like yeah. I, I love like, bad Australian. Oh yeah, accents, absolutely. I like yeah. them a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Simpsons episode, we talk about that a yeah. lot, but that's all bad. But also, like, intentionally. Just, yeah, I, I think it when, when people get it right, though, I think it's when people get it. It's a, really impressive. When it's really get impressive, it right. like Captain Boomerang in the Suicide Squad game. I think that's. Oh, I thought you were going to say in the movies because I'm like, he is Australian. Oh, he is Australian. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> or even when Australians tap into that particular. Yeah. But also, remember remember the movie The Stranger? Which one? Oh, yeah. Who did, who was, who did that? That's a really um, good one in that. He's the guy in the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, but he nailed that. Ethan. That yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethan. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, really good. Yeah. Robert, I'm in, Robert I'm in Danny, this van, but in a way we're both in this van. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Robert Danny Jr. does a good one in Tropic Thunder. Yeah. But that's more of a kind of a it's, – it's more of a parody, but he still does it. Like, yeah, He still true. does it really well. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. I got one here from Feno Menon who says, tag the pot a while back and got a shout out for this. So, so it seems like it's out. Dark. He's talking about Dark Forces – which was re-released. They they updated all the graphics oh, and all sure, of that. Sure, sure. And, uh, and you can also play it in the original. St- for those people who don't know, Dark Forces is Doom, but Star Wars in the, sure. from the 90s. But you can jump oh, and yeah. other things. That's right. And you can make rooms on rooms, which you couldn't do in original That's so Doom. That's true. Uh, so they re-released it. I, I just want to play Dark Forces too. But I don't know if you saw the – so, yeah, no, that's great. I'm glad they made – I might even buy it, not even to play it, just so they make the next one. Yeah. But um, because it ends up 
just a rat's maze, that game later, yeah, uh-huh. of just like keys and red doors and whatever. Yeah. As was the style at the time. Exactly. But LucasArts... Or Disney yes. cancelled a first person Mandalorian story based game. Again. This week. Because remember sort of they cancelled Star Wars 13, 13 which is going to be a Boba Fett game. Amy Hennig had one that they mm. cancelled as well. There's a bunch of them. So it was a story driven Respawn who made Titanfall. Yeah. Mandalorian game where you weren't the Mandalorian, you, you were, were a Mandalorian. Mandalorian. But you used, it used like jetpack traversal and different weapons and all of that. I don't like and Why that, would anybody want to play that? Yeah, I know. I don't like that the Mandalorians are bounty hunters. I like the idea that Boba Fett was just some guy who stole some Mandalorian armor. <laughs> yeah. Like his old origin. Well, too bad. It's yeah, his destiny. Great. Yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> He's... So, yeah. Anyway, I'm sad about that yeah, because yeah. you're going to run out of things to remaster eventually if you Then you'll have to come up with new games. ideas. Yeah. And we'll be dead by then. We'll so. be dead. So That's right. Here's an email from Robbie. Robbie. He says, I, I just can't quit Jurassic Park. We're going to have to. Dear James and Mace, I've been listening to the pod since 2017 and been a massive fan ever since. Well, just thanks, to, man. Just wanted to say that with the news of Gareth Edwards directing the next Jurassic Park movie, possibly, I've once again ended the cycle of being excited for a Jurassic movie, only for it to be not just disappointing but bad. Yeah, man. I love the first movie, and I keep going in thinking the next one will be different, and they never are, but I keep getting hyped anyway. My question to you both is, you have a franchise that constantly disappoints you, but you can't help but stick with it. Yeah, Jurassic Park. I like that, right? <laughs> Mine would be the Oceans movies. They've never... Never reached the They've never reached the, the heights one. of the first one with Frank Sinatra. Yeah. And I keep hoping I went in at 12 and 13 and 8. Yeah. And I'm like, I st- look at this cast, right? It's going to be incredible. Yep. Like it's a new cast. What a, what a, mm-hmm. you know, what a bunch of like industry veterans and new people. And it's going to be so cool. And it wasn't. You know about the prequel? Yeah, there's a prequel with, with Margot Robbie, Robbie and, and Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, yeah. That seems like that's the one for you. I don't think it's going to happen probably <laughs> because now they're too big because they did the big movie. Hopefully big movie. they signed on beforehand. Yeah, maybe. But then they can get out of it with yeah. millions of dollars. I mean, Indiana Jones for me, definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. They haven't been great since. What would, what would get – I mean, if they made another one somehow, we would watch it, obviously. Yeah. But – Terminator, that's one. That's yeah. – I'll Terminator all day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just – just and again, because it's – it's. I think it's the same with Jurassic Park World. It's the same with Oceans. It's the Terminator. It's the Indiana bar. Jones. It's snippets of greatness yeah. in all of them. Yeah. At least, you know, one great scene and you go, oh, this could have been the whole movie if yep. they – done it better yeah but they didn't jurassic city i think is like the working title okay um, i don't know i think daniel richman mentioned that okay i don't know whether that will that, i mean that could work if they an abandoned you know, new york yes, it's all dinosaurs. Exactly. i mean if they can't do if they can't if they can't scientifically you know prove that the, the, the world would be filled with dinosaurs or whatever yeah give us a give us a city zombie style where it's filled They've walled Give us off. I am legend of they've, dinosaurs. They've walled off New York City and yeah. it's filled with dinosaurs. Give us a change in that world. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's still going to hit that release date. I that's think right. it films in July. Mm-hmm. Gareth Edwards is yeah. directing as we uh, Robbie Mark says, Blake. I just want to shout out my buddy Evan, who listens to the pod and asks on his behalf if he can be the official number one Black Adam movie fan of the pod. It's his favorite movie. That's Robbie from Scotland. That's, that's actually my favorite movie. So, well, but you know, I'm gonna let this slide. But there's one more email here from Nicole. Nicole says, uh, my boyfriend and his best friend Robbie and Evan love your podcast and constantly quote and talk about it. However, my boyfriend just informed me he emailed you to call his best friend the world's biggest Black Adam fan. I do find this unfair as he is now left out. So can you officially make Robbie the world's biggest Morbius fan? And he absolutely <laughs> loves the movie and especially Jared Leto. Thank you very much from Nicole. Is there another email That's asking it. about That's... Nicole? No, no, <laughs> but if there could be going. one. <laughs> That's yeah. very fun. Two, it's two emails deep so far. <laughs> Uh, I got one from Red Lion Flames who says, It's Sydney Mardi Gras tomorrow. Do you watch many LGBTQIA plus films or shows? Some of my favorites are uh, Bros, The Boys in the Band, the Netflix series Heartstoppers, uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I do. Oh. And, you know, I, I enjoy all media. Absolutely. And I would, I would be strange if I excluded this, don't you think? All media is any good media, you know, any good media. I would, I would have loved to watch, again, over the, over like the Christmas, New Year's break, yep. going into the, the new year, we we make a lot of fun of like, oh, there's no good movies. There were a bunch of good movies, and Not I just here, didn't though. have time. Yeah, and they, or they don't come out. They, here. They're delayed, or you just see them on the coming soon yeah. outside the movie theater, and you're like, that's exciting, and then they just skip the theater somehow. Yeah, 
and end up streaming. But all of the strangers apparently. That's very the good. one that I I've written down that I want to see because that's got Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal. And yes. apparently, some, I think it's on streaming now. I, I don't know say. if it is. I checked and so, I. So okay, well it's close to. But yeah, as mentioned, Heartstop is great. I've only seen the first season on oh. uh, Netflix. It's really just like it's just nice as well. Yeah, okay, sure. These nice people. Is it based on a book or? A, I or think a... it is. Yeah, or. A, Graphic novel? Maybe? I can't remember. Um, I mean, the obvious one is Brokeback Mountain. But I think the thing about Brokeback Mountain as well is it had two of the like the the hottest rising like straight male actors. Sure, right. Uh, in the world at the time, who made this movie, and it was a just a different era of, and it took it seriously. It wasn't like, and I know there are like parodies and jokes that are even still made today about that. Uh-huh. But it was this real earnest kind of tragic love story, and it's like a genuinely. Amazing movie. Um, in terms of comedies, yeah. So Bottoms we talked about last week. Oh, yeah, that's week. a good that's one. That's really yeah. fun. Bros was mentioned here as well. Oh, Bros, that's Billy Eichner? Yeah, Bros sunk like a stone because yeah. nobody promoted it. Uh-huh. But Bros is like a – it's just an old-fashioned rom-com. Mm. Um, it's very funny uh, if you haven't seen it. I mean, another one from the 90s, it's, uh, Tom Cruise. Tom, not Tom Cruise. He's straight. Uh, Philadelphia. Yep. <laughs> uh, Tom Hanks, really good. There's a Netflix movie called The Power of the Dog. Yeah, I've which seen is a western, one. which is amazing. Yeah. And at the end, you learn the power of the dog. Yeah, it's a yeah. laser. It's a laser coming out of its eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So those are some of my uh, ones that I enjoy. But um, yeah, good luck at the Mardi Gras. If that has happened yet, I don't know. Love that. At the time of recording this. So there you go. You got any others, or is that? Uh, oh, that's every that email it? that's ever been sent to us. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Mm. Should we wrap it up? Oh, here's just one from Joseph. Joseph. Hey, fellas, have been listening to the show for a while now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've ever heard either of you mention the show The Venture Brothers, especially because it's surprising since the big finale was in 2023. I've never seen it. It's a seen show that. that seems very up your alley. Actual very funny comedy based on sci-fi pop culture. If you haven't watched Whoa. it, then treat yourself to a great show. Maybe we will. I've seen a little bit of The Venture Brothers. I like that era. Like, both, isn't it supposed to be Adventure Brothers? Yeah. Okay, great. I think that's probably a typo there. Probably, probably why I didn't watch it. Then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that kind of Hanna-Barbera revival, like Harvey Birdman. Space that Ghost, et cetera. Yeah, TV, exactly. Talk yeah, show, yeah, whatever. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. But Venture Brothers, I never really got into. Didn't Harvey Birdman come back recently? I think it did, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see any of it, but yeah. Oh, there's three seasons of The Venture Brothers on Stan. So not all five seasons. Which seasons? The middle Great. ones. Probably the middle ones. Probably two, three, and four. Ooh, they're my yeah. favourites. Yeah, they're, those are good. Yeah, man. I'll watch them. I'm going to watch some Venture Brothers this week. Well, I hope you do. I will. I won't. I probably won't. I'll watch Shogun after I learn Japanese, oh, which yeah. I will very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, next week also is Roadhouse. We're going to be roadhousing everybody. There's been some drama this week about. I'm going to be roundhousing people. You can roadhouse anyone you want, but I'm going to roundhouse. Thank you. I th- oh, we Every listener I encounter. That. I was speaking of uh, BigSandwich.co this week. Fidel put up a uh, that video we did on Superman 64. We did a playthrough of that and then another <laughs> bonus thing. I had to play it twice. Yeah. And I feel like the anger comes through. I feel <laughs> like. I don't know if you feel the same, Mason, about I d- it. Uh, yeah, no, I – I mean, what didn't come through was the funny colour you turned after we played it for 20, <laughs> 30 minutes so and realised that there was no audio was recorded. so bad, Mason. Yeah, I know. And whose fault was that? I don't even know. One of my kids, I think, came in and messed with some mm, of the equipment. But punish them uh, both, that's what I say. That's right. That's right. Folks, thank you so much for listening to the show. We absolutely appreciate it. Uh, thank you for subscribing to the podcast on your podcast app of choice. Thank you for telling your friends about it because yeah, that's man. how we get new listeners. And thank you for leaving a five-star review in app if you can, wherever, wherever or maybe there's some standalone podcast review. Definitely. Platform. I don't know. But if you do that, five-star review, James will read your review out. I'm going to do that right now. Nice. This one's from the Principal Mittens the Cat. It says, hands down, my favourite podcast. I somehow ended up listening to one of the clips that was uh, referenced online and after that I was sold. They are both down to earth. That's true. So Knowledgeable. True. true. Hilarious. Check. Oh, yeah. And just fun to no listen Japanese. to. No Japanese. No Japanese. Not currently. Not this week. But next week. Yeah. And I've just learned so much about Australia. Well, they're arigato the, gozaimasu. <laughs> they're the only show That's that... Thank you very much. <laughs> they're the only show that I uh, actually give money to to listen for, uh, for the extra content and no ads. Thank you so much. And this one's from Blue Soup and Down. Sup and Down? It says, it's good. I mean, it's no bluey, but it's fine, I guess. I mean, we're not trying to be blue. We could, we could do that. We if could we do blue to. easily. Yeah. All we'd have to do is learn dog language, <laughs> which is what I presume they speak Brisbane on. Brisbaneian dog language. That's right. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's right, uh, folks. Yep. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group whoa. or the Weekly Planet Podcast 
subreddit and Discord for fun civil chats about podcasts and pop culture. You can uh, thank Fidel and Maisie and Saravi for keeping it all civil and fun and good times over there. You best believe. You want to follow some people on the socials, first follow our friend Rob Collings. He edits this podcast and makes videos and keeps you up to date on all the things Weekly Planet over at, at, Raw Collins dot, uh, at Raw Collins on Twitter. He does such a good job. At the Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can follow me, uh, Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, and Nick Mace on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. everywhere. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Mm-hmm. Check it out. You're in a man you wouldn't miss. Everywhere. Or you can go to bigsandwich.co. Super for nine US dollars. this week. That's right, nine US dollars per month. I mean, if you want to see James, be furious. Yeah. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of content on there that makes James furious. We're going to record some after this. We are, actually. Uh, and also uh, bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, video game, let's plays, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Thank you to The Brute and the Basilisk and Rack and Pearl, our musical themes. T-shirts Damn. at tpublic.com. That's right. Search for The Weekly Planet. Yeah, search. Next week, Roadhouse. I'm excited for Roadhouse. I'm excited for Roadhouse, too. He's gotten ripped. Gyllenhaal's gotten ripped. He's, a, he's doing a ripped Roadhouse. That's right. I'm and he ripped. might have been that person who was mean to Rebecca Ferguson. Oh, was he on the list? He was on that list. What movie did they do together? They did um, some space one. They're out in space. Oh, life. Of dudes. Yeah, life. A couple of dudes out in space. Really? Yeah. Because oh, she was like, she, I mean, it's her business. And she was, wouldn't, oh, she wouldn't I should Google who, Rebecca Ferguson who. But she did an interview on a podcast and she said, there was one person who she'll never work with again and they were number one on the call sheet and it was like 10 or 11 years ago. And and everybody went crazy with the with the, with yep. with the t- so she did say ten or eleven years ago. But maybe she maybe she was that yeah. you know maybe she was like you know back in the nineties ten years ago, which is what I think all the time. Yeah, you know. Oh, the person said also didn't say man. That's true. But said being so insecure and angry because this person couldn't get uh, out of, get the scenes out and would would literally look at me in front of the whole crew and say, you call yourself an actor, this is what I have to work with. Oof. And I liked how Dwayne The Rock Johnson came out and said, I, I, like I liked who did this, mm. which is like a way of him being like it wasn't me. I yeah, right, right. Nobody thinks that you would have done that because I think also he's not the kind of – he's not like an actor's actor in that way. That's true, Where he yeah. would have been like no one's being good acting. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. We Vin Diesel would have done that. Yeah, 100%. You're not employing the Brechtian method, he would say. Oh, did you see he announced next Fast and Furious? No. Whatever, because he hasn't, since the bunch of allegations came out, mm-hmm. he's been quiet on social media and he finally did a post where he was like, we're doing one final Fast and Furious. One movie. last ride. God, and I hope that's true. <laughs> Just knock it off at 11? Yeah, man. Just right. a casual 11. Casual 11. Yeah. Ocean's 11. Legs 11. That's right. Yeah. Anything else? That's, That's the whole show. Cool. All right. Yeah. Again, Roadhouse next week. Mean um, old Jack Gyllenhaal. He did it. It was, wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe. We knew it. Maybe. We knew it. Oh, here's another thing. Oh, Hugh Grant, people have said. Isn't, yeah, but I, th- I think she said I think she said specifically it wasn't Hugh Grant and it wasn't Tom Cruise. Okay. Those are the spe- specific ones she didn't say. And I think it's not Emily Blunt or Emily Blunt said it's not Emily Blunt. No, because she's always like, that's my girlfriend, Emily Blunt. Oh, my God, you know, really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Uh, the, other, the other piece of news. Here's mm-hmm. a piece of news. I love news. They're pr- apparently planning on an American psycho Reboot, oh, that's but a right. present day one. I think Jill and Hall would work for that. I think he's too old. No, because the point the point of it is, yeah, but that's the thing. He's vain. Well, I mean, old. he's not vain and old, but I think the uh, like. Don't you think you want to set it in the time period where it's set? Isn't that doesn't that add to like? I think it kind of does, and also like the idea of the idea of you know how Patrick Bateman has the insane skincare routine or yeah. whatever doesn't seem that weird now. Like no, when TikTok people regular, are like, here's yeah. the 15 things I use every morning or whatever. Yeah. But uh, somebody on Twitter said, okay, in order to uh, – the perfect Patrick Bateman needs to be like conventionally good looking, yep. good actor, yep. freak, <laughs> like weird freak. <laughs> and it's like Gyllenhaal. Yeah, no, you're right. right? Yeah. Or somebody also suggests – somebody also suggested, <laughs> is it Alison Williams? You know, the lady from Get Out? I thought <laughs> – the one who the went to jail for the for the, for the cult. Oh, <laughs> so that's you were saying, Alison. Like, yeah, well, she else. is something else. Yeah, uh, Alison Williams. Oh, yeah, that's a great choice. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's a good one. I, I like that. Yeah, because she turns in um in Get Out. Yeah, Get Out. Yeah, turns on a bloody choice. dime. That one. Yeah. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of Patrick Bateman kind of TikTok lookalike kind of. Yeah. Do you just get it? I mean, is that the entry point? Get a TikTok guy. No, but I mean, is the, is it is, is the new American Psycho uh, influencer? Maybe, they, maybe they're oh, in... but is that kind of like? Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. It's all like, but also, why do it if you're just going to do it? Yeah, if if you're just going to do the '80s businessman again, I think that the 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 core of one of the scars guards, the core of American Psycho, 
is it someone who is completely deranged and maybe a murderer? He's almost certainly a murderer. Yep. But they exist in an industry where everybody is like that. Yes. And no, and therefore no one notices. Yes. Yeah. So I think you could do it in TikTok, but the problem with TikTok is it's all remote. Yes. So it has to be maybe like like a WeWork kind of like a yeah like a like a shared workspace okay, grind yeah, set kind of thing, and everybody's like that, but one guy's a murderer. Well, I like that. I don't know. I saw Jake. I've got some that like Jacob Alordi, like that guy. Okay, he's yeah. All right. He's, he's, looks, I don't know enough about it, but he's freak like, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Christian Bale is like yeah. that. Is just, Andrew Scott. Andrew Scott. Andrew Scott, yeah. Again, probably, I mean, in your 40s is like, you know. Oh, yeah, okay, right. What yeah. about Tom Holland? Do you think he could do it? No. <laughs> Just no? He could. Sure. Yeah. I Austin know. Butler. Yes. He, did, he was that weird sperm freak in that movie. He was Mr. Saw. Sperm Freak. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, Austin Butler could work for sure. Okay, yeah. that works. Okay, that's it. That's the one. All right. And he'd get into it. He'd really get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's All right. the show. Grab that gem, folks. We'll see you next week. Bye. Roadhouse.